music because I've been having weird Skype issues lately and people can't hardly hear it anyway. I'm Captain Logan. My name's in the title. Right next to me is my good buddy, Brandon Grimm. Hey, that's And my tonight name. we're doing another Four Horsemen show because it's still the apocalypse and no one has anything better to do. So across the way, the Skype brothers, we have DJ Martinez <laughs> chat modding for us. That's me. And we've got Dan of the Tories. Hey. Dan, thanks for agreeing to be here last minute. I know you had to close out your whole calendar for the evening. You know, I did. Um, but it was it, I worked today from home, and it, it, this is a good way to unwind, I think. It's, it, it'll be good. Oh, thanks, man. Well, that, that makes us, I'm sure that makes us all feel warm and fuzzy inside. I would agree I with so. Dan's sentiment as I also worked from home and needed to get out. Cool. Well, I'm oh. I'm glad I could, I'm glad Same. I could be a source of catharsis for you guys. That's great. Hanging out with Brandon Wait, I... is always a source of catharsis for me. I just uh, noticed that you and sometimes. Brandon aren't six feet away from each other too. Yeah, oh, yeah you need to spread out. Times I know we're, we've got a piece of plexiglass between us. Breaking the rules. <laughs> now I got to work on my mime skills. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I. Uh, I mean, Force we, perspective. I mean, we could do that, but we'd have to back way the heck up and then have a have two different microphones. Well, now I feel bad because everybody's I... gonna be like, "Well, as soon, <laughs> as soon as one of them gets the virus, we're gonna know why that happened." Well, I actually, I'm I'm getting a webcam, so I should be able to get, do it from home next time. Okay, you just don't want to come over here. Well, that's definitely not true. <laughs> I mean, true. I'm not like. No insanely concerned about it because like you know it's not a gathering of, of 10 people and you're working from home like if you were out all day like if you had to go to work i'd, I'd be more concerned about it but you're not like going out all the time or anything so. no this is one of the couple of places i have actually been and i am absolutely not out of my house hardly at all uh you might see me getting more insane as time moves on no um i've actually been really oddly enjoying it um i think i've been out of my house a total of three times in the last three weeks maybe four like at all dan went on a trek for pizza that was fun yeah i went on like a four hour walk the other day that was a lot of fun i quite enjoyed myself i walked on my lunch break dan you most assuredly uh must have burned the calories of that pizza oh yeah most assuredly um i hadn't i got like a uh kind of sunburn too which I'm like, wow, like I'm really looking like Snow White because of this quarantine. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in the comments said, hey, look, Dan's growing a beard. I would love to see the statistic of the number of men that are growing out their facial hair right now and just not giving a crap about it. One right here. I am one of those people. <clears throat> Mine, I mean, I go back and forth as it is already, but DJ, you're not doing that. No, I keep mine trimmed for... For a reason that I will save for a conversation with Brandon on After Dark. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. I think we all know exactly what you're talking about at this point. <laughs> so, hi, everybody. Thanks so much for watching live. I see a lot of folks in the comments there already. There's Mark Guerrero. Divid22 is here. Gregory Davidson. Noah O. There's Connor Nielsen. Hello, Connor. Good to see you, buddy. Donnie St. Pierre is here. Mutale is here. A uh, bunch of folks. Ponderer is here. Welcome, everybody. We are going to have a normal show tonight, except that it is the return of just a week later of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Uh, no crazy After Dark-esque discussions this evening, although uh, if what DJ did just a minute ago is any indication, I'm sure there will be we some that are clouded, uh, that, are, that are, you know, a little bit, uh, <laughs> a little shrouded, uh, as, it, as it were. They're thinly veiled. Um, we're going to talk about whatever you guys want us to talk about tonight. There's not a specific theme. It's an Ask Us Anything show. Uh, I didn't realize these two guys, other guys were going to be here tonight, so it still says Ask Me Anything on the, on the uh, screen there. But if you feel like asking Brandon and or Dan things that are not directed at me, feel free, of course, to do that. No goal tonight. Uh, originally, and I even a few minutes ago, or like, like half an hour ago, um, mentioned in the Discord chat that we were going to have a goal. I decided not to do that. Uh, I figured since the four of us are here, it'd be fun to just have a, a a little bit of a longer show, do a, do a two-hour show. Um, obviously, Super Chat's still very much appreciated. If you want to make sure that your question or comment gets asked, that is the way to do that, and we really appreciate it, but we're not going to um, go for a particular goal this evening. No goals, because we have no ambition. Uh, so, two-hour show this evening, and we're just going to jump straight into it right away. I'm excited to see that people were here. After Tuesday, I was really concerned 
that no that nobody was going to make it because I had to do an entire <laughs> show and nobody was here. That's actually not true. It was my April Fool's Day video. Oh, um, oh. Yeah, I, 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 I sat here and recorded an entire hour pretending like no one was watching me. Okay, that's And it was really fun. <clears throat> and was... I showed every single thing on my desk. And there were many things. This was likely the least prankiest April Fool's ever. Well, to the point where I was kind of concerned about it. I wasn't sure it would be like in, in bad, you know, uh, taste, mm -hmm. like bad form. So I did a poll and was like, if you guys want me to do an April Fool's Day thing, I will. What was great is I did a poll and it was like 78 22 like most people said go ahead and do a video and dan I, people were still stumped by it like that shouldn't have happened i asked about april fools two days before april fools people still bought it <laughs> that's funny <laughs> did everything i could do dan is glitching out like dj was the other day we thought it was dj's camera it's not it has something to do with skype we think we don't know what's yeah, going on it's weird hmm. Hmm. That is weird. I don't, I don't know what the deal is, but now it's not DJ at all, and it's only Dan. It's word. We're going to go ahead right, <laughs> right now and get to some questions. DJ, what do you see, buddy? I see a lot, but I do want to start with this because uh, I'm going to let you take it away because someone is quoting you on, oh, no. the, uh, on the SSSS Plus. The Discord. Is that what we're calling it? Yeah. <laughs> on the Discord... I'm assuming this happened on the Discord. Um, I was not there last week, but it says, in all caps, I can't believe I sent you this money with my fingers. So I'll give you, is that, is that, did you type that or did you? Okay, so here's the thing about that. Um, I need someone to remind me what that quote is about because somebody made a big deal out of that on the Discord the other day, right after the April Fool's Day video. And I thought maybe it was something I said during that. Is I can't, oh, I know what it was. I can't believe I typed this with my fingers is a thing I said when we did game night on Saturday last week in the Discord. And we played uh, Quiplash in uh, a thing called Jackbox, which was really super fun. We're going to do it on After Dark at some point. It was just the best. We played again the other day. Uh, Dan and I were both there both times. It was really super fun. And uh, anyway, I typed something uh, just really gross and wrong. And I and I got got points. It was just that kind of game, and uh, I and I was drinking too much and yelling things, and I got I think the second most plastered I've ever been that evening. It oh was boy. nuts. I'm not gonna drink again for a while because it was insane, and uh, yeah, it was bad. And I said something insane that I can't repeat here, and said I can't believe I said I wrote this with my fingers. <laughs> Dan, uh, do do another plug for the uh, Discord, would you? For anybody that wasn't here oh, last yeah. week. So um, I created a Discord group, um, which for those of you who don't know, is like a, a chatting service that people uh, that game use, but you can use it for all kinds of other things too. Um, <laughs> it's a texting and um, voice chatting service. Um, and we have a group going on um, comprised of the people that are patrons that are in the superhero secret society group on uh, Facebook. And um, it's been a really good time so far. We've had a lot of fun. Uh, we voice chatted uh, here and there. It's just been a great time. We have a great group of people. So uh, if you'd like to do that, uh, then be a patron and join up. It's a good time. Yeah, and if you join in on Patreon and you're having difficulty finding it, let me know. I should put that on the Patreon page. Um... Well, the link that you provide to the Discord um, expires in 24 hours. Okay. So. Because we have to invite um, people, yeah. Yeah, I, so I would send encourage Dan anyone... a message. Yeah, exactly. Or make like think. a, or make a post in the Facebook group, and I can post the link there too. Whatever works. Yep. So. Cool. So far, we've been doing um, extra cool things on Saturdays. I don't know if that will remain the day or if it will stay weekly, but last week we did a game night, like I said. This week we're doing movie night. Uh, so come in and check it out and um, see if you want to hang out with us. It's been super cool. I'm planning on being there on Saturday. Uh, I don't know if Dan wants to reveal the thing we're doing, but we are watching a movie on Saturday if anybody is, is interested and wants to come check it out. So. We're watching Spidey Man: Far From Home, so any of you, if any of you guys like that movie, uh, come come and watch it with us. It should be a good time. Okay, DJ, what else, sir? All right, we started with a real heavy hitting thing. Yeah, it, was, it really got us off track to in the early start. Um, let's see, what's a good one here? What's a good one? Uh, Cap. <laughs> I don't know if that's yeah. Good have, will you ever consider doing a rewind on the Filipino Batman film 
called Alias Batman and Robin. Yeah. It's a comedy slash parody based on the 60s show. I know about Have you heard that. It? Yeah. Uh, I never thought to actually review that. Uh, there was there have been a couple of weird things like that uh, that are like not licensed Batman things that existed in the 60s. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I would consider doing that. It would probably fry my brain, but yeah. <laughs> no immediate plans, but maybe maybe someday. All right, Connor Nielsen asks... <laughs> Should have put that on Batmania. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'll have to do another Batmania here pretty soon. It's probably already... You know how many movies there's been since you did that? Uh, it's got to be at least, like, just animated, animated one. stuff at that point, but yeah, probably... I don't know. Well, of the things with Batman in the title <laughs> since... Because I think the last one was Batman Scooby-Doo. We've had... <laughs> But because uh, that was Brave and the Bold, uh, Batman Brave and the Bold and Scooby Doo, um, which was really, really you besmirch Scooby Doo, Brandon. Yeah, I don't know what's funny <laughs> about that. But, no, um... that's just funny to me. But anyway, <laughs> I, like um, I don't think more than four or five would be honest with you, uh, because there, like I keep talking about DJ, there have been so many more Batman things that don't have Batman in them lately <laughs> than things with that. Because Batman was just things with Batman in the title, not things with, where Batman appears. So like, there's been Justice League things and stuff like that that have Batman in them. But uh, there's been a Lego thing. There've been uh, you know one or two animated things. But because we even covered no, that wasn't the last one. I think the app, the absolute last one. Uh, that we covered on Batmania was Gotham by Gaslight. Uh, we did get that in there. So, yeah, not too many. Cool. And now for something completely different. Connor Nielsen, <laughs> what is the best Harry Potter movie? Any answer that isn't Prisoner of Azkaban is wrong. So says Connor. Yeah, and that's one of my least favorite ones. We've talked about this before, but yeah, I don't like, yeah, I don't... I don't like three. I don't get the appeal of that movie at all. Um, the time turner thing is fine, but that does a lot of people's favorite thing, and I don't, I just don't get it. Uh, my favorite, like, my opinion is never anybody's opinion with Harry Potter. Uh, my favorites are five and six, and a lot of people hate five, and you, I don't, I don't care. It's my favorite, so deal with it. In, in number four, they removed it from the movie. They moved it to a plot line that made other plot lines unravel in the later movies. Yeah, that's right. No, that was a problem. <clears throat> my, my, my favorite my book and movie are four. So that's my answer. So my favorite of the movies is actually the first one because I had the I had the privilege of reading this book before it came out in the United States. I had an after school care teacher who went to Europe and got this book and brought it back and I read it to the after school care kids. And when I saw the movie, when it finally came out and I saw the movie, the first movie was exactly how I pictured the whole book in my head. It was it was perfect. I don't think that movie holds up as great as it. Yeah, like I loved it when it came mm -hmm. out, but yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen it very much since. Um, Six has a brilliant score, so much so I bought the CD when it came out. It's got a really, really good soundtrack. Uh, Dan, four is my favorite book, uh, and I was just let down by the way they handled the maze at the end. That's why it was difficult for me to to put to put the movie as high. But yeah, that's fair. They just spent so long on the dragon, they couldn't do the maze right. <laughs> Uh, Robert Pattinson played uh, Cedric Diggory. That's pretty... That he did. Crazy when I looked back on that and realized who that was. I was like, oh my goodness. Before his Twilight days, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Okay, All so right, here's David, one. real quick, I want to clear this up because yeah, David22 yeah. is uh, trying to explain to people who don't know which of you is DJ and which of you is Dan <laughs> based on which of you is Latino, but neither of them are. <laughs> <laughs> neither, regardless of the fact that DJ's last name is Martinez, he's actually not Latino, and neither is Dan, as far as I know. I am not. I am not That's Latino. True. <laughs> what are you, Dan? Do you know? I am Irish. Oh, that makes sense. My wife is Irish. I am actually mostly Native American. Really? So I don't know where the name came from. Now that you say that, but... I guess I can kind of see that in the face a little bit, but I never thought of that. Got can we call you bones. from now on? <laughs> what can we call you chief from now on <laughs> sure that's not offensive at all <laughs> i was the, the offensive joke i was gonna go for dan is i'm gonna start telling him that he's gone off the reservation so so my heritage is german catholic and russian jew those don't really go together connor says he used to wow. be mexican and i don't know what that means <laughs> 
<laughs> that means he ate Taco Bell yesterday, and now he's not anymore. That, no, that means he used to be Tex-Mex, Dan. That doesn't make you Mex, Dan. That makes you Tex-Mex. Oh. Chief you Welder. You don't believe me, Gregory Davidson. I, I, I've done 23 and Me. I can send you a link if you don't believe me. Oh, I've done the 23 and Me as well. I don't know what that means. Oh, it's a it's a DNA reading DNA site. They tell you oh. all your stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Stuff. Mine's boring. Like we're Gregory, English and like, French. That's all we are. It's it's boring. I ha I did have like one percent Congolese in me, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know what that, it's I don't in know the eyes. I'm sure. <laughs> all right, we got some super chats stacking up. So I'm gonna jump over that. Um, this one's for Cap. Reapy Cheek seven seven five Cap. Have you ever tried writing a novel trilogy or series? If not, would you want to attempt it? Not since junior high. Every aspiring writer in junior high wanted to write a nineteen book series. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was writing a, a book series back in junior high that was god awful called Forty Five Seconds, which was about a kid who, uh, like, I was really into teen book series at the time, so I was writing a thing that was sort of like that. It was about a kid that when he went to sleep. <laughs> Uh, he could send his consciousness off into, or rather, his consciousness got lost into, like, the, the, a dream world, which is connected by all of us sleeping. And so you would jump, like, head to head from different people. And at the time, there was this nonsensical theory going around that when you dreamed, no matter how long it uh, felt like you were dreaming, the dream only lasted 45 seconds, which is why the book was called that. And which is not true, uh, but at the time I thought that was true, and so that's why that's what I called it. And uh, anyway, so that thing I had like six or seven books uh, laid out for. Since then, I uh, never had a lengthy series figured out. My first novel, The Girl with Seven First Names, is supposed to have a sequel. I've not yet written it, uh, but it was only ever supposed to be two. Um, I didn't want to go off any farther with it, and is part of thematically, if I finally get it written, uh, my plan for a. Uh, for a three book, uh, for a three apocalyptic book series, but the three books don't actually have anything to do with each other except thematically. They all technically take place in the multiverse from my first novel, but that's because it's you know really easy to connect all your universes in one multiverse. But that's the only connection that they have with each other. So um, there's another novel that I'm planning on writing in the relatively um, uh, uh, near future which is actually set up in a really subtle way in the food novel, uh, but actually has nothing to do with um, with the food novel. So, uh, Is there a reason that your book series, 45 Seconds, sounds a lot like that episode of Voyager Unimatrix uh, Zero? 45 Seconds sounds like Unimatrix Zero? To me. Like the, isn't that the one where, they're, where the Borg are dreaming? Oh, I see. I thought you just meant title-wise. Oh, no, it's no, like, no. Because they have numbers the in them? No, the episode. I'm so confused. No, because I, that, that episode comes out three years after I come out with that. Yeah, <laughs> after I come up with that. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, we can see all the different things that are in DJ's bloodstream. Ah. There you go. 1.2% oh, wow. Western Asian and North African. I feel like you've just given up a ton of, like, Personal information yeah. there. <laughs> I would not right, be so uh, comfortable. Man, I feel like now we all have to give out our social security numbers and uh, tell you the first time we got laid and everything. Um, Whoa, that's an after, after dark, dark conversation. It's an after dark conversation. No, it's not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell people when that happened. Anyway. Oh, there's a, here's a one from John Ty. Is there a weird paradoxical nature of superhero ideology where they want the villains to turn good but don't trust them to turn good? Okay, read that again. <laughs> All right. He says, is there a weird paradoxical nature of superhero ideology that they want the villains to turn good but then don't trust them to turn good? I mean specifically, they, they don't trust them or they don't actually want them to? They, they, they want them to, to but, don't good, but they them. wouldn't trust them being good. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think that's a weird dichotomy. I think that's just like, <laughs> the, like the way it would be, right? It's like you know, I fought this this person doing all these like crazy bad things. They keep breaking the law all the time. Like I want to believe them when they say they're going to try. And that's kind of a uh, that's kind of a trope or like a, a a story we do a lot in superhero fiction, uh, where you have the superhero or the supervillain who looks like they're trying to reform, but like nine times out of ten, they either don't manage it, they actually try to reform and don't, or it was all a ploy all along like no you're just kind of an idiot if you buy that i think it kind of depends on what you're talking about too like the x-men have successfully reformed many of their villains that's true um but 
they're the exception rather than the rule, I think. But also, did the hero trust that they would actually turn around in any of those cases until they did? No, of course not. Yeah. But True. I think the question really is, if they did turn themselves around, would they still be trusted at that time? I think it depends on how long it goes, right? Sure. Like, after after a while, like, <laughs> yeah, and that's a, that's a good question. And that, that's what the question is. Yeah, that's interesting. Where Like, people are very adaptable, and people are, by and large, I think, maybe just because I'm kind of a glass-half-full kind of guy, um, like, kind of, somewhat, at, at least, uh, for the most part, trusting in nature. So, like, you want people to be good, even if... Uh, they have never shown you that they are before. At least I think most of us kind of want that. Um, I think you see this a lot in politics, where like no matter how many times a politician who uh, has never proven themselves th to be trustworthy or altru altruistic um, like lies, people because they're the leaders of the of, of the of the country or of the the city or wherever you are, um, we we want to be able to trust those people. So like we're we're uh, we're kind of primed for them to do a good thing and to do the right thing so that we can then feel more safe uh, down the road. So I think it's, I think it's that kind of thing. I think that, like, I think that is how a lot of human nature is, but, every, but you know, different people are different. Certainly. He totally wants to know if I would be a good politician. I think I would be a terrible politician. Dan, Dan, yeah. I got to say this real quick. Sorry to interrupt the show. My wife just sent me a text. Uh, with an article that says Joe Exotic from Netflix Tiger King is in quarantine, coronavirus quarantine. No, uh, I heard that. <laughs> Does this mean today. we could lose him? <laughs> He's got it, man. Oh, oh but is anyone man. surprised though? <laughs> so, well, he's in prison. I mean, I'm sure prisons are running rampant with it. Yeah, and yeah. They've, they've taken special precautionary measures in a lot of prisons. But did you also see that that show has led to some leads on the disappearance of that guy that they talk about in the show? Dude, yeah, I, 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 I hope so, that. man. Yeah, I gotta find out. Tiger King. All right, next. <laughs> I haven't looked at that yet. It's really funny. Like I've been seeing everyone's reviewing that show right now because like there's no movies. It's though. everywhere. So, so that's what everyone's <laughs> talking about. That show. There's no way it would have gotten the kind of traction it did without without the virus. I like. I think people would be talking about it. Don't get it, don't get me wrong. It is a phenomenon because everyone's at home. Yeah, that's probably that's, true. Actually, they gotta thank the virus for that one because and also it's because bigger. it's a. It's it's the only like 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 uh, like really entertaining reality type thing that like just came out that anybody can look at right now where people are outside doing insane crazy things because for the foreseeable future no one's gonna be doing that. All right, I got one for Cap and Dan. Super chat from five five nine zero ERS. Let's do it, Dan. Let's do a team. Captain. Let's do a Geek Solution team up. Bada All right, powers man. unite. <laughs> Captain Dan, what are your favorite DC Earth One books? Um, How much of that have you read? Considering I've read two of them, <laughs> I my choice between the two of them is Batman Earth One Volume One. Two is also really good. I have not read two, but I liked the the first one from what I remember of it. I read that book like maybe six, five years, whenever it came out. It's a long time ago, oh, and boy, never it's went been back. Four or five to years it, so. now, yeah. Yeah. I am going to put Superman over Batman, but I really like Batman, and Jeff Johns needed that, right? Because he had a reputation for not being great at writing Batman. Now, there are people who don't like that book, so he still has that reputation with some people, but I thought he really redeemed himself with that book. Uh, I think it's a really interesting reinvention, and uh, love what they do with uh, with Penguin in that. Um, the... Uh, that's a really neat costume. Like, like I, I like those books a lot. The uh, Superman, I think, uh, is one of JMS's kind of masterpieces. Uh, that trilogy, and you got to read them all because it is one ongoing story, um, start to finish. It's a, it's a, it's a three, it's a you know three act story. Um, but I think it's wonderful. I like Wonder Woman. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and those are the ones I've read. I've not read the Green Lantern one, and I've not read the uh, Titans. Wait, Titans. I think, yeah, I think they did, they did Teen Titans. I think they did one or two volumes of that, but I've not read those, so. Is that line still ongoing? Like, is Morrison going to do another Wonder Woman one? Is that a thing? I, I think so. I, th I, I think he said that. That is such a bizarre line where, like, you don't hear about it forever, and then one finally comes out. Yeah, they take forever. It's super weird. Yeah, it's really odd. I kind of wish, on the one hand, I like the idea of more standalone graphic novels or 
like doing it like a not like a novel format where every couple of years you, f you finally get another one but they are you know graphic novels as opposed to ongoings but at the same time earth one has been good enough i mean it's not all supposedly in one continuity i don't know that they ever cross or talk to each other maybe there's a couple of little um mentions but like there's a part of me that has always wanted that to be ultimate dc I, I'd love to see more stories from that Batman and Superman, uh, but at the same time, I really like yeah. that format. So even if it was that, I don't know that I would want it to be monthlies. I think I like it the way it is. Yeah, I like that they're, you know, the standalone graphic novel thing, like you said. I just wish they came out a little bit more frequently, but I, I guess I suppose it's worth it because the art in the two that I've looked at at least are amazing. Like, Gary Frank takes forever to do anything, but his art is always worth it. Well, he's, that seems great. to be the theme of those books. There's two big themes, Dan. One of them is re, do, do, do an interesting reimagining, uh, reinvention, and two, get artists to work on it that look great but are always late. Like, they only yeah. get artists that are always really late. <laughs> But it's worth it. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm surprised no one did a Flash one. Me He's too. like the one DC character, like of the big, and I guess Aquaman too. But mm -hmm. especially um, at this point, yeah, I, I wish someone would do a Flash one. I'd probably read that, and I mean, maybe depending on who it is, I suppose. But yeah. Uh, at, at this point, I would almost expect uh, Cyborg to get one. Like th those two should get one, and then and then you know the next thing they would do is give Cyborg one. <laughs> Yeah, because everyone is hampering to see Cyborg. <laughs> Did you say hampering? We keep pretending like that's what we're doing. Uh, yeah, hampering. It's a verb. Uh, okay, what's next? I thought it was hankering. I think I think I think uh, I think he meant hankering, but I love oh. hampering, and I'm going to start saying it. Okay. Yeah. Hampering. <laughs> it's, uh, so hampering is a verb, and it means wanting something so badly you trap yourself inside of a, a, a thing full of clothes. Okay. Before, clothes until hamper. it finally comes up. Gotcha. I, like I invent new words all the time, Brandon. It's Keep called up. coining words, by the way. <laughs> coining. He does, and uh, he thinks he's a regular Shakespeare. That's what he thinks. Yes. I hold a skull all the time and everything. It's fantastic. Oh. <laughs> all right. And I'm here to get us back on track. Hawk Flame says, what do you nice hope buddy. to see in Harley Quinn season two? More Bane. Just as much Bane <laughs> yes. as humanly pod. Just Bane it up because he's just <laughs> he's wonderful. Hilarious. Oh, man. It's, it's, I'm going to blow up Gotham Stadium. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, it's such an emasculated want, thing. Yeah, it's I want, so funny. I want more Bane. I'm very interested to see their take on Catwoman. I was surprised they didn't do the Gotham City Ooh. Sirens thing in the first season, and I'm excited to see their Catwoman. <laughs> uh, that was the big thing I wanted, was what is Catwoman in this world. And so, uh, especially because her dynamic with Poison Ivy, whatever, however she is... Uh, characterized has to be really interesting because that poison ivy is such a is, is such a fascinating layered kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, um, beyond that, I kind of just want to like I don't mean to cop out, but like I, I'm kind of along for the ride with that show. I'm enjoying that so much. I kind of just want to see what crazy thing they throw at me and not try to guess because they they're always surprising me with that show. It's one of my favorite cartoon shows of all time now. It's certainly one of the best things on right now. Yeah. <clears throat> but I don't know if you had anything in cool. particular since you're watching that show, but, like, you're not a big DC guy, so I don't know. Not a, not a huge DC guy, but that show is just awesome. Like, from what I know, from the Batman movies that I've seen over the years, you know, I get I get my biggest picture of Batman from that. So, I mean, it, and, of course, I watched, uh, what was it, Justice League when I was little. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so it, it works for me. I really like the characterizations. Uh, Poison Ivy is, is deeply fascinating. And uh, I, I really dig her interaction with Harley Quinn. And Cy Borgman's pretty funny, too, but also I just like Jason Alexander. So. Another, yeah, he's great. Another prediction I'll make is that uh, Poison, I Poison Ivy, uh, Harley Quinn and Joker will go to some kind of a gang war in the second season. Like, I think she's going to get a bunch of char territory. I think they're going to do almost like a No Man's Land thing with Harley Quinn versus the Joker in territory. I think that's likely to happen. All right, TH1 gives us a $5 super chat. Thanks. Why does Cap not like NeverEnding Story 3? And what is everyone's favorite? Um, and he says, your channel I'm, is awesome okay. at all times, especially in the dark times. 
Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Um, if, if we can put a smile on anybody's face during all this, we've, we've done our job. So uh, apparently we've also done our jobs if we've accidentally insulted a person. Uh, so this, this, I'm assuming this is the same guy, because why would two people in a week bring up Never Ending Story 3 to me? That would be amazing. Uh, mentioned in the uh, in, in the Discord that that was his, his favorite of those, and I thought he was joking, so I apologize profusely. <laughs> Um, I saw it one time and it was really cheap and hard to watch. I thought I'm I'm sorry. I like <laughs> uh, I I don't have I, any any specifics right now because it's been probably 12, 15 years since I saw it. Or when, I don't even know when that came out. I'll, but it's I'll been, give you a specific. A long time. Jack Black is the villain of the movie. How is he really? You? I don't remember that. He's, oh, he's the bully. That. He's like a bully. It's like very very young Jack Black. I've never seen it. But it was on a preview of a VHS tape I had, and I saw the preview like a million times. <laughs> so I, really I don't remember which movie it was on, but it was yeah, a movie I, I watched a lot. I can't give you anything insightful, man. I, I, I haven't seen that in so long. But like the, like the, the, the sequel, excuse me, the initial sequel uh, with the kid from Sequest is not good, but I remember it being better than three. Um, yeah. And I also remember that movie being way too short because uh, it just looked like they had no money. and Yeah. I like the first one. That's the one I can remember the most of because I probably saw it the most. But it, again, any of them, it's been forever. You saw the other I've ones, seen, though? I've, I've seen two, I okay. know. But number three, I'm not actually sure. But I knew Jack Black was in three. Two, I'm I don't know that I've fuzzy seen. on whether or not that went to the theater. I'm pretty sure two and three were both directed video sequels. I'm almost positive about that. We had them in the in, uh, in after the, school uh, program that I was at. Two, two is actually the second half of the book. And the second half of the book is when he goes into the story himself. Mm-hmm. And they only had an, they only did the first half of the book in the first movie. I don't think I've ever seen – I think I saw two once. Like I rented it one time, but I don't remember those movies at all. Those were not part of my childhood. I remember from two and like, you know, everybody's recast or, or mo- I think everybody's recast. I remember uh, the Atreyu and that not being as good. Uh, that kid, I don't know who that is and if he went on to do anything else, but Atreyu in that first movie, he's a, he's a cool actor. Um, and he just had a really neat look about him. It was like d- d- super unique. Uh, but that second movie, the, the big the big thing that stuck with me and the thing I liked about it uh, was this notion of uh, like physical memories that become marbles that you can like take out of people's brains and steal and keep them. That was a really cool fairy tale notion, I thought. Yeah. But so I remember no little... details from three at all, except it just looked really cheap. <laughs> All right. We have a Canada $2 super chat from Komodo Dragon Boys. Thanks, with a Z. I don't even, I don't even wow, know that exotic. name. Thanks so much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah we're if all you're still new, trying welcome, to figure welcome. out how much Canadian money is. None of us know that. That might be five cents. We have no idea. <laughs> the internet. Uh, oh, it's a good question, though. Favorite lost storylines? L- capital L O S T. Yeah, lost okay. So, um... Storylines and Marvel Phase 4 Hopes. So two very different things. First season as a piece is just beautiful. It's just wonderful. Not a whole lot I would change about that. Uh, <clears throat> like like that just as a narrative, even if you never got any of the mystery solved, which is fine because ultimately they didn't know what they were doing <laughs> with that show. Um, <laughs> but uh, like my, my favorite stuff, because uh, I guess you kind of have to break it down by characters I guess there's some subplots I could go to. Like I like the thing with the numbers a lot, where you gotta you gotta push a button every so often, or 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 you know the island is supposed to explode. That was fun. Um, the the uh, the whole the whole character arc up until like fourth season with John Locke was wonderfully tragic and fantastic. I, I I'm gonna say John Locke until not John Locke is is the is the is the, is the whole thing. Uh, well, I was and... gonna say just um, what's his face in general, the guy pushing the button. I can't think of his name right now. Uh, I mean, are you talking about John Locke or because no, like the guy, a lot of people the guy push the pushing button. the button? Oh, you're, Desmond. No, he's talking about Desmond. He's talking about Desmond. Yeah, Desmond. Desmond. I Desmond. Said, almost said Dustin. Right. Yeah, yeah. Desmond's story is awesome. Yeah, that's true. No, he's great. Um, I watched the first couple of seasons of Lost. And then Ben Linus is amazing. Hmm. I like Mr. Echo. Mr. Mr. Echo. Echo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like the way they wrote him out, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the whole show just goes downhill. After. Anyway, it does. Anyone else watch Lost? I have never seen Lost. I watched the first two seasons sporadically, and then uh, even less sporadically through the rest of them. There were some great episodes that I saw, but I watched most of the last season <laughs> too, and I just felt they had no idea what they were doing in the last season. Cap, Cap's uh, 
Cap's favorite storyline is when they're in cages for half the season. <laughs> <laughs> that's nap time is what that is the lighthouse thing was weird I the lighthouse like thing made notes the yeah. pendulum thing two yeah. seasons before that was weird I, I like and then it's it like like this is how you time travel there's a big pendulum that swings back and forth makes time travel happen um oh my guess symbolism I, yeah and they, they would have like literal symbolism like in that show forward or, reverse season forward. four it makes it very clear that now it's a straight up Honest to God science fiction series. And by six, it's just a really vague fantasy thing. We're like, we go, okay, so there's like this light at the center of the island, and that's what's been making everything happen. And I'm like, oh, I can't wait to find out what the light is. You get to the end, it's a light. That's uh, what, what it is. The, the suspense surrounding the hatch was, yeah. I, I liked that. Well, that, that was all involved yeah, in the numbers well, and all the, that. The, the Dharma Initiative stuff is my favorite stuff. Of that's the whole, all great. Of the whole yeah. Show. I yeah, love that's that pretty stuff. Cool. Yeah. yeah. The split timelines was weird oh, to me, too. Oh, you know what else I'm going to throw in the ring there? Um, also, because a lot of people don't like the split timeline thing and don't like the the, the, fa the fast forward, the flash forward stuff, mm -hmm. it's hit and miss. Some of that I really like a lot. Sure. Sawyer running part of the Dharma Initiative is awesome. Yeah, that whole thing is so cool. boss. Anyway. I'll say that's one of the best examples of taking, like, the character you love and the character you hate and completely flipping them by the time you get to season five. I've never, that was like the first time I had that experience. They took, where like the character I loved in the first season, like my favorite character, and the character I hated, and now they like completely flipped. They flip them, yeah. With, with, with Jack Sawyer, and yeah. Well, and Jack is great at the beginning, and then he just becomes absolutely insufferable, <laughs> and I want him to die. Yeah. Uh, him and Kate both. Exactly. Really, like Kate goes back and forth. Sometimes she's great, sometimes she's not. Um, but with uh, who were we talking about a second ago? Um, Sawyer. 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 So 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 Sawyer I uh, is. Um, the, the the confidence man. He's a con artist, and like he's like a thirty-something con artist who has his coming of age story by going back in time. Like it's fantastic, it's so good. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, well, the other part of his was um, fourth phase four hopes. Remember? I guess that wasn't fa fast forward. I guess that was that was back. Or was that happening at the same time? Were they stuck in the past at the same time as other people were in the future? Was that a different season? I, don't I can't remember. I can't remember now. Anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, Sawyer didn't get off the island. He was back in time. That's right. He was back yeah. in time during that. Yeah. Well, you didn't watch that far. Well, I watched yeah, sporadically remember. through all seasons. But... Oh, that's right. You said that. Okay. Yeah. But when you said you cannot watch lines, sporadically and that, lost, you'll you, be lost. Were you just talking about people complaining about the the gimmick of the flashbacks, or did you mean the actual split timeline? The actual split timeline. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yep. Anyway. All right. Anybody have any... Let's give it to Dan, since he didn't get to talk. Uh, do you have any Phase 4 hopes? Uh, yeah. Um, the movie that I'm the most interested in is Doctor Strange 2, uh, because Doctor Strange is one of my favorite uh, Marvel characters. Um, not too hopeful after the stuff with the director falling through, but if Sam Raimi ends up getting that movie, I'm uh, potentially more excited than I was at the outset, because I love Sam Raimi. Um I hope Black Widow is a good spy thriller because I think um, her uh, background in the comics and the the same stuff they hinted at in Age of Ultron is potentially really interesting. Um, exploring that stuff further could be really cool. Um, and in the first Avengers movie too, yeah. Yeah, no, like I think, and, and in Winter Soldier too, she's a great character. She's um, that, yeah. So I, I think that movie has the potential to be great if they lean into the more like serious spy thriller stuff. Um, so I hope that's kind of what they do. And then as far as the TV shows go, I'm hopeful about Loki <laughs> and She-Hulk. Those are the two ones I'm the most excited about um, at the outset. WandaVision looks like it could be cool, too. Um, it does. But, it looks um, trippy. Yeah. And I've read some of Tom King's run on the Vision, and it's amazing. And that's what they said they're kind of basing it on, pseudo. I'm sure it's going to be loosely, cool. loosely based on that. So, yeah, because it's if you've read any of that stuff have you have you read any of tom king's run on the vision at all i read the first issue but it's been forever yeah so like the the, the <clears throat> whole point of that is like the vision trying to um establish himself as like a, a house father in the suburbs of washington dc and that show looks like it's like vision and wanda in like a suburban setting sort of thing at least in some parts of it so that could be potentially interesting so um but, but i'm but hoping somehow they're in like the 50s or something right yeah, um, so I'm hoping that, you know, these things turn out to be great. Other than that, I'm sporadically interested in what they're doing in Phase 4. Um, some of the movies I probably won't see in the theater. I'll wait till a video to see. Um, so, yeah. 
I, I'm hopeful, but not everything they're doing is interesting to me this time. Nothing movie wise <laughs> just has me over the moon. Like I can't wait. Like I'm freaking out, Dan. Like the the one I was closest to was Doctor Strange. And when they lost that director, I started to get a little bit worried about it. Right? Like okay, so yeah. Like who knows why that guy left? But so far, anytime that's happened, it's usually been because of like really compromising a vision. And usually, you end up bringing in somebody that Marvel's able to just sort of boss around and make something that's sort of what we've had already. So I hope that doesn't happen. And if Raimi does end up getting it. I'll be, like you said, more intrigued and thinking there's a really there's really good hopes for that. But I think it's also possible that Sam Raimi's fingerprints won't be on it as as much as they want to be. I just I have no idea. I'm more interested in the TV side right now, which I'm really surprised to say. Uh, Falcon is my favorite character, and he's getting his own TV show. So how do how, how do I not be like super freaking nuts on stoked for that? Uh, and his dynamic with Winter Soldier, what little we've had of it so far, has been a lot of fun. I'm expecting a great deal of. Um, cool witty banter and fun back and forth from those guys. Uh, One Division is is a is is again a fascinating concept. Um, I don't I, I don't care enough. Loki's one of those characters where I don't care about him until I'm watching him, and then I'm like, okay, he's fun. Uh, so like I don't care about the show right now, but I'm sure I'll watch it and be excited about it when I'm watching it. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, they announced Moon Knight. That's exciting. Uh, yeah, I don't think that I'm, is Phase Four, but that's happening somewhere at some point. Uh, and I want to yeah, be excited about Blade too. Get... I would like to be excited about Moon Knight, but it's going to be a Disney Plus show, so I don't know if they're actually going to be able to do Moon Knight. So I guess I, I'm like, I'm yeah. potentially excited about that, but I, I just don't know how compromised it's going to be. You know. Well, here's the hundred thousand dollar question, Dan. With Moon Knight, would you be more excited if it was announced as a movie because it would have the same potential problems, <laughs> like? It's yeah, really just exactly. ne- them not having Netflix shows anymore. It makes it difficult to get over the moon about Moon Knight, no matter what it is. Or, or just being able to do things that are totally different in style, you know? Which clearly they are, they, they do seem to be trying to do with the Disney Plus shows. It seems like that's where some of the experimental the experimentation is going to happen. But that's without yeah. having seen any of them yet, so. Yeah, I mean, I just hope that they're able to do something a little bit more adult but with the Moon Knight this, show and do it. The nice thing is, like, like the Mandalorian sets my mind at ease a little bit because that show, I mean, it's not like a, like, like a super adult thing. I don't think it has to be, but they, they, they were allowed to experiment a little bit. It doesn't feel like anybody told Favreau what he had to do with that show. And that makes me think that some experimentation might happen on the Disney Plus shows. So even if they're not allowed to go as far as the Netflix shows did in gritty, you know, realism and gritty stories and stuff, um, you might still get a really interesting Moon Knight show, even if it's not as violent or whatever as it would have been on Netflix. Yeah, I suppose we'll see. I hope. I hope. So. I hope you're right. Yeah. I'm not saying I trust that. I'm just saying that's the glass half full response, maybe. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm re- um, looking forward to Shang Chi. Uh, hopefully, that like I said before, that's my dad's favorite superhero, and uh, oh, that's I cool. hope that's really good. Yeah, and I hope that's really good. And I was excited for Hawkeye, but is that on? Is that delayed indefinitely? indefinitely. Do we know anything about that? Yeah. Okay, so we don't know if that's happening. Yeah, that sucks. After all that weird stuff came out about Jeremy Renner's personal life, I think Disney's been kind of like, you know, Ugh. well, that's unfortunate. I'll ask you guys later because I don't know what exactly we were delayed. Does he wear hats upside down? I like I have I no idea what exactly that. it is he does. Uh, really or bad domestic his... violence accusations. Yeah, his wife. His life. I have. I yeah. have heard about that. I forgot about that. <laughs> Significantly different than wearing hats upside down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that could have been involved, too. Who knows? It's possible. If there's, a, if there's a character in the MCU that can get uh, recast, it's it's Hawkeye. <laughs> I think we'd be fine with that. I mean, I think I think I like Hawkeye as a character in the comic books a lot. Like, I, he's one of my favorite members of the, the Avengers in the comics. Um, I would like to see them actually do something with him. But that show looked like it was going to be a passing the torch to, like, the younger girl Hawkeye anyway. So, yeah, um, okay. I don't know. You know, it's it's odd. That I think it was maybe, now that you say that, because I totally forgot that's what they were doing, Dan, and, and basing it on uh, those comics, which were immensely popular. Um, and I, good. I like that a lot. And I read only a little bit of it, but I like what I read of it. Um, really quirky. The art's great. Uh, but I think it was maybe premature of them to say and hold on indefinitely, or on hold indefinitely, because if that's what it was going to be anyway, how hard would it be to make that show without him? Like, they could probably get away with that. 
I doubt it. I would imagine he'd be pretty involved in the plot if he's training her to be the next generation of Hawkeye and everything. Yeah. I, I mean, would imagine he'd be... Like, I would imagine the show is, like, it would would have been his swan song, like, and then they write him out at the end of the show, you know, something like that. I'm just saying, I think... <laughs> Hawkeye's Logan. That te- what that tells me, though, Dan, is that they weren't very far along in the process at all, because if they had started on it, they would have figured out a way to do that, I bet, right? Because, they, like, that's what we usually do with stuff like this. It's like the Roseanne situation, where it's like, oh, we'll write her out, make the Connors, <laughs> like... Yeah. Which shouldn't have worked, but people are watching that show apparently <laughs> anyway i saw a clip of that and thought the writing was horrible anyway wait. <laughs> we have a super song. chat from john john ty thanks man should every superhero follow batman's no killing rule Ooh, uh that's interesting done done if they for the sake of called... variety no <laughs> if okay yeah i love dan's answer so as a reader no ethically <laughs> If you want to be called a superhero, yes. Right? Like, I think it's weird to call somebody a superhero that uh, systematically on a regular basis goes around and kills people. I don't think that's a superhero. I mean, that's a, well, that's I a don't. I mean, most thing. of the MCU kills people. Like, it's not. Mm-hmm. None of them are follow that rule. Are they righteous? Captain America and Iron Man kill a bunch of people. Yeah. You didn't say that. You just said they can't kill people. Well, you no, I know, but, on me. but the, those are no, <laughs> not. I'm, I'm not though, because because you got to go back and look at the at the situations. Like in in each of the scenes in which that happens in the MCU, they're not like running off on their own and being vigilantes. Like like they're always situations that are a lot closer to war zones and stuff. Where like at that point, it's real dicey uh, as to whether you can consider them like soldiers in a battle at that point, as opposed to superheroes running off on their own. Um, that that would be the argument I would make for that, but yeah. But isn't the question like Batman's no, rigid no no yeah. kill rule ever ever rule? Yeah, yeah. And like I, th- those characters have broken it. Well, and 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 then my response to that, yeah. I mean, if we're saying like like never ever ever, and obviously it kind of depends on. In, in some ways, the, the version of Batman, because Batman never kills on purpose, but I mean, like, I, I still think there are situations where if it was between, like, a little girl dying or not, he's not going to use a gun. He'd probably let a bad guy die, you know, that kind of thing. And then it becomes a matter of, is he responsible? Well, yeah, he lets Roz die. But yeah, the very, like... The, the the very rigid Dan like like I like I'm never gonna kill in any situation whatsoever. Um, that's too absolute and no. I mean there are there are situations where um where where, where Superman in, even even in comics uh will will kill and it feels really bad about it. But you know there's situ- certain situations where if it's a self defense kind of thing you have to. Um, so I would say no, probably not. <laughs> where he kills Zod in that movie. But I just don't think that ba- that's not what I'm talking about. But I, but I don't think that Batman is is, is always is, is is rigid as he's often played these days. When it comes to that, interesting. He also just gets lucky a lot that people don't die when they totally ought to. Well, and that's the thing in like the MCU too. Like when you watch those movies, like Captain America like throws a vibranium shield at people's chests and they fly back like twenty feet. Like that guy would be. <laughs> dead in real life <laughs> well yeah like i think captain america has this uh this telepathy thing with his shield dan that allows it to only impact things as much as he wants to in the moment because sometimes he'll throw it and it'll go right through stuff and shred things and other times he'll throw it and the person just gets knocked over well and we have established in the mcu that it does not obey the laws of physics so <laughs> no, it the shield is i mean it is these MacGuffin things the shield is like kryptonite Sometimes Superman uh, can be, like, right next to Kryptonite and it doesn't kill him. Right next to a big mountain of Kryptonite and he's, and he's okay. Like, he's not feeling well, but he's not going to die. And sometimes it can be way across the room and be this much, and he's, like, really close to death. It's super concentrated, <laughs> don't you know? <laughs> don't, don't you know? You know. <laughs> Where are you from? You know. Apparently Minnesota. North Dakota. Minnesota. <laughs> Brandon's gonna write the the Superman Elseworlds where the only thing that is different is he landed in Minnesota and not in Kansas. That sounds interesting. <laughs> what else we got? All right, we got a super chat from John Ty. Would you want Thanks, to see any of Alex Ross's work done in animation? Yeah, that's a cool idea. Well, that's... see. 
I don't know if that's possible. You that say that. What I want it, I mean, you have to, it would have to be somewhat compromised. Uh, but I think you could make something based on it that's real stylized that still looks enough like it that it could be really cool. But like, it would take a lot of animators. It would be, it would be expensive. Um, the first thing that comes to mind to attempt that with is Marvels. Uh, I would love to see a, a film adapt, like animated adaptation of Marvels. I'm kind of surprised that they haven't done Kingdom Come in the DC universe like line of animated movies yet. But that's maybe the reason why, because you would never be able to make something on whatever budgets they have that looks as good as Alex Ross, you know? No, because it would have to be photorealistic. You know how you do that, Dan? Rotoscoping. That's how you make that. Yeah. Or you could just make it a live-action movie. You could. <laughs> but if you were going to do it animated, it would it would be really expensive because you would have to film actors and rotoscope it in order to make it look real, yeah. as, as real as it should. And then you make photorealistic faces over that. Yeah, yeah. I suppose you could do something like that. That would be cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love Alex Ross's artwork. So I mean, I would like to see someone attempt that. I'm with DJ though. I feel like that would take like ten years of <laughs> animating to actually accomplish. <laughs> yeah, this the superhero bubble was be... just popped, and there's no more superhero things on television. And then that thing's like, coming out. Those movies are finally to be, like seventy five <laughs> minutes long. Marvels on uh, Disney Plus. <laughs> Yeah, those movies are only like 75, 80 minutes long. Like, if they did it with the houses they have right now, it'd be so compromised. It would take 10 years, like Dan said, but be 25 minutes long. Like, it couldn't even be any longer than that. All right, cool. Bag Studios. Cap, what? Is, your I mean, first novel, is your first novel available to buy? Yeah, it's on uh, Amazon right now. Actually, sir, Bag Studios, I have a copy I could sell you for, for a very good deal. <laughs> I have a copy I can mail straight to your house. Uh, Free it's, shipping. It's called The Girl with Seven First Names. It is, it is a print-on-demand thing, <laughs> and uh, I, I believe it's it, it's it's either print-on-demand or they've only got so many copies, and when it's in, when it's out, it's gone forever. I'm really not sure, to be perfectly honest with you, the way that's set up. Uh, it's, with, it's with my old publisher, who is defunct now, and I actually don't have that information. I just know that it still is there now, and Prime, and you can buy it. I don't know how long that's going to be, so that might, I don't know. For the 19 people who care, that might turn into a collector's item. Um, but it, and but, now it'll take you nine weeks to get it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You'll probably buy, if one person buys it, you probably have all the stock they have. Because Amazon's not, not selling any new stock right now either. When they run out of stuff, they're done unless it's uh, like like necessities. I heard that. I heard about it that today. It is not coming up. In my Amazon search, so it might be sold out. It did last time I looked for it, which was only a, a few book, weeks ago. A book called The Girl with Seven Names, a North Korean defector's story, I is know. available. Oh, I know about, I know about that. <laughs> By Heosinyo Lee. That's intense. <laughs> it's weird if it's suddenly gone. It was here just a couple of weeks ago. Well, anyway, I'll do some just... research and see what happened with that. Yep, it may be that you, that you just can't get it ever again. I, I don't know why it would suddenly be gone now. Uh, maybe they did sell all the copies they had and took it off. That is entirely possible. Um, I still have, have I have a few copies left that I could uh, maybe sell people and sign, um, and I would be willing to do that. I have to find them. Um, I probably have 12 or 15 left. Uh, and at some point, I'll try to finish the audiobook or, or uh, record a new one um, so that people can listen to it if they want to do that. Oh, quick plug, by the way. Uh, tomorrow, I mentioned last week that I was going to start doing this, uh, or, or that I was that I was going to do this this week. I think I mentioned it on Patreon. I can't remember if I, if I say things live or just for the Patreon audience. Um, but I am going to make the food novel available for a limited time uh, to listen to for free because people have so much free time and are looking for extra things to do and also it ends up being weirdly relevant to what's happening right now which was not intended and i like i wrote it three years ago and the timing of my putting it out was really interesting uh but i have heard from some folks that have that have listened to it uh hey cap has it occurred to you that there's all these parallels to what's happening right now to what's to what happens in your novel and i was like i should let people listen to it um for free so that's what i'm gonna do uh that's gonna go up tomorrow and uh, for the next month uh for the amount of time allegedly that we're supposed to be in quarantine although i don't think there's any way that it's only 30 days i think it's gonna have to go longer than that i uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna make that available for at least that long. So look forward to that. Uh, if you've not become a patron for whatever reason and don't want to do that, um, I'm gonna let you listen to it for free and without ads. Uh, and if I accidentally forget to turn off the monetization, uh, somebody let me know because I don't want uh, people to get interrupted listening to that book. I want to even put it out without ads.
else. So um, if you want to, um, you know, uh, uh, make a donation or something, um, you know, for for that, uh, because you're able to listen to it for free, feel free to go on Patreon, become a patron, uh, but don't feel the need to do that. I'm going to let everybody listen to that for free. So that's what I'm doing. What else, DJ? All right, we've still got like a dozen, like twenty super chats left. We are my this, goodness, these people well, thanks, are awesome. Everybody, tonight. that's that's all. Yeah, I guess we probably could have had the goal and probably managed to make it, but we <laughs> are going for two hours, so uh, we should have enough time. I should never say that. I should never say that we'll have enough time to do all this. <laughs> all right, from Nicholas. I don't recall this name. It's just Nicholas with a smiley face. Uh, thanks, super smiley chat. face, hey, Nicholas. It's actually uh, two. Two li- straight lines and another straight line, so it's more of like a like a medium face. He's he's like he's not amused. Hey Cap, any reflections on Spawn Year? Would you glass or half, any of... half kind of guy? Just half. He's a glass half guy. <laughs> Would you or any of the rest of the gang consider doing something like that again? Um. Yeah. So uh, I I really, 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 really want to get back to Batman Year, and I just have not been able to for a bazillion different reasons that I've talked about in other videos. I'm not going to bore anybody with more of that. Um. I don't want to promise when that's going to happen, but I still have every intention to get back to that at some point. Um. The problem, part of the problem with it was uh, lack of interest compared to other things we were doing. So I would probably want to take some time off intentionally from from relining things I'm doing right now in order to do that. And I've got a big backlog of uh, rewinds that I really need to get to, um, of requests and things. So, uh, main reason that that's not happening right now. But uh, if we come back, it's gonna be and and, and try to try to finish that. It's gonna be very interesting. Uh, I have I, I have new plans. I've rewritten uh, the or at least in my brain, um, it's got a different ending now that, that I would be writing to. Like like it's got it's got a whole. The villain has changed. Like what the villain is has has changed. Since since the move like I think about this all the time I just haven't I just haven't gotten back to working on it uh, so yeah that's that I'm, I'm hoping to uh, the as far as spawn year itself goes I mean I mean well, I could talk about spawn year all day it was two years of my life uh, one of the uh, here's the thing I've never talked about uh, that I'll bring up because I spawn year comes up all the time and by the way thanks to everybody that still goes back and looks at that show I still get comments from people that say I've watched it th- through three times it's 365 episodes which makes you a crazy person that's so <laughs> neat of people um i hear people say like it's my favorite thing that you did i, I still I, I still go back and look at her i still think about it and like that make man makes me feel good do you uh, still have the journals yeah i still have the journals yeah and and at one time considered mm-hmm. um selling them like uh like doing auctions for them or something but i don't know if i could part with them uh, that was that was just such a you know big part of my life. Um, I've still got all the props. Uh, I'm planning on putting up a glass case and putting a lot of spawn your props in the case. And I want to get mannequins to put the suits on uh, down here in the bunker. That's a plan I have. I'm gonna put the sp- the, the spawn suit and the Asbat suit and maybe even about that for a while. maybe even the Coke Redeemer suit. Yeah, you know uh, be cool. mannequins. like some black lights around it or something. Yeah, it'd be awesome. That'd be really cool. One thing I've never talked about is how I got out of the rut I was in when I took several weeks off and wasn't working on that show. Uh, it took two years because I got completely fed up and just couldn't handle it anymore. Um, I lost my sanity and I blamed Dan. Uh, <laughs> because uh, Spawn Year was weirdly in a roundabout way Dan's idea. Uh, he, Dan gets co-creator credit on Spawn Year. Dan's name is on every episode of Spawn Year. He did almost nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he appears a couple of times and his cameos are wonderful. But he's on every episode, and and it's like a producer credit. It's like Discovery, where I just give people producer credits, but they don't actually do anything. And um, sorry. Yeah, it came up, it came about because we were in like a Skype call one night. I think it was after you did Tick Month for the first time, and <laughs> like right. I was like, "What? If, what if you did Spawn Year?" And we were like, "That's a ridiculous idea. Who would ever do that?" And then you were like, no, I think I'm actually going to do that after, like, a week of contemplation. <laughs> so <laughs> The thing that really made me want to do it was when we came up... We didn't actually do this, but we came up with the fake promo that was coming soon to Geek Geekvolution for the foreseeable <laughs> future. Spawn. Yeah, as, soon, you know. as soon as I said foreseeable future, I was like, I'm making this show. That sounds hilarious. <laughs> but the plan from the beginning was just to make it a daily vault. It was just going to be me sitting in a chair talking about Spawn comics like yeah. I did with the tick. That's all it was going to be. 
turned into this and then huge I came narrative. Up, and then I came up with the idea of going ahead and writing them, and then I was like, let's build a set, and I'll just like get a fog machine, and I'll set that the set, so much fun. and we'll have this kind of bookend thing that'll be like Wizard of Oz, where it's like, uh, you know, I go into like a dream sequence, and I think that I'm really in a graveyard, but there's not actually a narrative, it's just this like bookended thing where every episode is just a review. And then I met Pierce, and he started building a latex suit, and it just turned into a whole thing, and it turned into, like, an act. And I felt like I was making a TV show by myself. And I don't think it's going too far to say that was, like, being the showrunner and the main actor and the writer and, 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 and everything, except for some costumes and props. Uh, and it just wore me way out and I got so burnt out and it was the most difficult thing I ever did. It was also the most rewarding and satisfying thing I ever did. Uh, it's not the b biggest view counts we ever got in the channel. It is the most love we've ever gotten from people on the channel. It felt like the, the people that liked that show were diehards for that show and I felt like they were watching me like a TV show and like they were putting it up on their like you know at the time they were watching it favorite TV shows. That's what it felt like and it just made me feel the, be the absolute best. Uh, and and then people for the, the few episodes we made of Batman Year that love Spawn Year were telling me that Batman Year was even better, which I also just made me lose my mind and, and it makes me want to finish it. But um, the story I've never told, I don't think somebody's totally gonna give me the link later, the video where I told this story. But uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't think I did. Uh, Dan, I don't know if I've ever told you this story. I uh, the way I pulled myself out of the rut, I had several weeks, maybe th as much as three months, where I just wasn't making this one year. Questions all the time. Well, Cap, are you gonna finish Spawn? I was like, well, I can't leave it unfinished. I uh, I left my house and stayed in a hotel for a weekend and just wrote scripts all weekend. Um, to to uh, to try to get my mind back into it, and I think I wrote like nine episodes in one weekend. Uh, and when I came back, and like, and, and and but I also like in between, like I didn't just write the whole weekend. I went on walks. I went to parks. Like I just spent a lot of time by myself, kind of contemplating and just like trying to uh, ease myself back into it. And um, I was in a lot better shape after I did that. Uh, that was uh, that's one of the big things that sticks with me is just that weekend, just by myself, forty eight hours. <laughs> Um, just in a just in a hotel here in town, uh, I just just getting away from everything in order to get myself back into that. But um, but yeah, I'm trying to think of other stories I've never told people, but I've told, I've talked about this so much. And so, we've got making of uh, featurettes and things. If you've never watched those that are on the channel, uh, that are a lot of fun. And um, uh, uh, Brandon and Pierce and Vince and, and everybody's interviewed. And, and, and go go in and check that. Uh, the the, the making times. the making spawn your. Uh, uh, kind of kind of little hour documentary. Uh, look at that if you've not seen it, because I did a video journal um, all the way through Spawn Year, and so uh, start to finish, you see footage of me talking about Spawn Year from two years before that, going all the way up. I kept all that footage, and then a month after I made that, the hard drive where all those was on uh, uh, was was destroyed, like was like like broke a, down on me. That was such and a I was trying time. Really lucky that I that I had already made that, and that I was able to use that footage. So can I ask you a question about all this? So yeah. If, if the villain and everything has changed for Batman Year, do you want to tell anybody what the original storyline for it was? No, I don't. Okay. No, I absolutely don't. Um, because I'm hoping that people have forgotten it enough that they might still think that that, 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 that the thing that could happen is what's going to happen, but it won't actually be. Yeah, because cause like, I, need, I need that to be a potential red herring, so I don't want to tell anybody what it is. Okay. No. But, uh, but anyway, somebody said spawn your uh, uh, DVD set or spawn your Blu-ray set. I had always considered making one. Um, people don't want physical media like they used to, and I imagine I would sell five copies of that. So I'm not, like, I'm not really sure what the point is now, but... Would you be able to sell copies of that too? I don't think you'd be able to legally sell copies of that because no. it's copyrighted. And, well, and now that you say that, like I know that I had just forgotten momentarily. <laughs> uh, my plan originally <laughs> was to give those away. Actually, uh, I was gonna I was gonna make some of those, and it was gonna be like a you know sort of a contest. No, it was gonna be it was gonna be with Patreon. It was gonna be if you were yeah. at a certain tier, you get that, mm -hmm. um, which which you, can, you should, which you can uh... get away with, but yeah. You should make one set and send it to McFarland. <laughs> but he gets the only one, and it's like you actually kind of considered and that it's at like one time. Really decked out, you know, like it's super <laughs> professional looking. It's in like a spawn head, 
Send it now before he makes the movie so we can learn something. (laughs) One time, it's such a good idea. I shouldn't do that. I don't remember if you if if you remember. I kind of want to. I don't know if I I imagine he would get like two episodes in and he would he would drop out. No, he's not going to actually watch that. And, I would just, and, no. What I would do is I would send him the I would send him like a like a like a really cool looking DVD or Blu-ray, but it would just be the movie version and see how far he could get. He could, because the new sorry the new movie version has the documentary uh, about him that, that that I reviewed, and so he would hear me talk about him as a person if he watched that for it. At one time, you may not remember this, but at one time we speculated whether or not he knew Spawnier existed because we were like. He's full of himself enough to go search this stuff out on the internet, but is he like invested enough to actually then watch it? We know that that uh, that writer a couple of years ago, who uh, for just a few issues was allegedly writing that book with him, which I never buy co-writers with McFarlane. Um, but the the guy that was uh, that was apparently writing that book at the time, we know he saw it or at least watched some of it. And mm-hmm. seem to actually like it, but that's the that's the only person involved in wow. Spawn that I that I know has looked at it. Um, people ask me all the time if McFarlane's looked at it, and <coughs> I'm gonna assume not. He's never spoken about it, if so, uh, that I've seen anywhere. I kept for a while when I was still reading Spawn, I kept looking at the letters pages just to see if somebody. I kept waiting for somebody to ask that question. The letters pages, like, have you seen Spawn here? But then he probably wouldn't publish that letter. So anyway, that's enough about that. What else we got? <laughs> We got another super chat from John Ty. He says, is a monopoly a good thing if the product they make is good? No. Okay, so I looked at that question earlier, and I thought it said, is the game Monopoly a good game? That's a different one. That's the next one. Was that also in there? Oh, yeah. They, they, he, he used him as a, he jumped off of Bag Studios, jumps off of John Ty's question. <laughs> says, and, uh, and asks that. That's great. Dan, elaborate. But first, let's answer this. I'm not, um, I'm not a fan of monopolies, period. Yeah, I don't think that could ever be eliminating competition. Eliminating competition in a in a marketplace like just by necessity makes products worse and more expensive. So it's bad for the consumers and bad for society at large. So I I don't think there's a reality in which monopolies. <laughs> it was initially. It it's was against the initial. Innovation. Yeah, and it's against the initial like like notion of the capitalistic society we live in. Like, if capitalism can work, that ain't the way for it to work. You can debate about whether or not that's a good system, but you have to have competition if it has any chance. Yeah, and I don't know that you'd be able to gauge like what uh, like if everything was monopolized. Like, would would and it, and it persisted for so long? Would people even know like what a good product is in comparison to anything else potentially? You know, I agree. Yeah. Like, if you don't have, you'd be able to, to identify. To compare it to. Yeah. Like you'd be uh, you'd be able to identify things that objectively don't work, but like things that are just of like lower quality that barely meet the minimum threshold of like fulfilling the need that they're trying to fulfill. There, there's you a know, good, there's a good uh, indicator of this by the fact that your area only gets power from one company. Oh, yeah. So sure. that's I mean that's kind of a necessitated like. Monopoly in the like you're only going to be able to run so many lines. It doesn't make sense to run more lines. But the fact that like first of all, it it's a lot hard. It used to be a lot harder to get solar panels. You know, generate your own electricity. You still have to be on the grid legally. You know, these are these are things that some people would like to do, that you know go against. Yeah, that makes sense on the consumer level, but go against the, the company level. You notice that sometimes even when you have two or three companies, <clears throat> none of their pro- products are particularly great be, because there's not that much competition. Well, yeah. and a lot of them, especially like the thing I thought of initially when you brought that up, Cap, was um, the way cable companies used to work because they essentially had local monopolies where like they – were the only cable company available in a certain, um, you know, area in a state or whatever. So, like, they just didn't have to offer a product that was better than anyone else because it's the only product you had access to, you know? This mm-hmm. happens with small uh, town movie theaters all the time, where a movie theater will come in and, like, push out the local guy, and then they don't have to be any good. It's the only place you can go see a movie. It happens all the time. And that's Walmart's business strategy. What they do is they they move into a um, into towns like new towns that don't have WalMarts that are like all mom and pop stores, and they undercut them all price wise, um, so that everyone goes to Walmart. And then after all the mom and pop stores close, they raise their prices 
um, to make more profit. They do it everywhere they go. Um, so yeah, I, I don't, I don't like that stuff. It's, it's, it's not good. Dan, I want to piggyback off of, uh, or, or go back to something that we talked about last week. Uh, Dan's been here so many times now. There's like a continuity of Dan, of, of, of Dan episodes. Um, Dan, we were talking <laughs> last week about what the coronavirus might do to the comic industry. And uh, DC um, is looking for another distributor to go with since Diamond's not going to put out books. And there's apparently a distributor that has come along now that is going to try to do, and I don't know what companies are, are signing up. I haven't, I haven't looked deep into this yet. But, but apparently the idea is they want to do digital books for right now, and if you purchase the digital book, you get a free print book later when we can start doing those again that would then come into the comic shop and uh, when the comic shops open in order to help out the comic shops. And I think this is all very interesting. It is possible that we will come out of this with no longer having a monopoly with Diamond, and I'm really interested to see if that ends up happening. I mean, I hope so. Like we said, Diamond is, like, notorious among every comic shop owner I've talked to. I know when you did your documentary, you had a little bit of a different experience. But every um, comic shop owner I've ever talked to um, hates Diamond with a burning passion because yeah. their service is terrible. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess that could be a, a silver lining about this. I, You know, again, I'm just worried about, in regards to the comic industry, like the smaller companies surviving um, this, of uh, of course. this stuff, you know. Because, like, even if there's another, even if a distributor, like, comes along to compete with Diamond, if the big two are literally the only viable um, companies after this happens, like, all of them either shut down or don't have the resources to produce more than, like, two titles or something. And the only um, reason I'm sure they like, be viable is because they've got parent companies. Yeah, and exactly. And I'm sure, like, Image will be fine because they have, you know, um, they're kind of like the proving ground for other media stuff, and they have The Walking Dead. So, like, they have a pretty good, you know, revenue stream. But um, as far as all the other companies like IDW and Dark Horse and Boom and Dynamite, like, I'm worried about them. I would be really concerned about some of the bottom tier ones like Dynamite. I think I think the companies like that are going to be really hard-pressed to survive this. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm worried, but I guess we'll see. Uh, let's just, I, I'm going to try and be optimistic and hope for the best, I guess. <laughs> but I'm curious to see if, and I don't know if Marvel's talking about this either, but I'm curious to see if, if DC manages to make this happen before the quarantines are lifted, where they're able to send out their books without Diamond. Uh, and if other, if smaller companies then will be able to use that distributor and then start to get back up on their feet again. I'm not even sure why we need Diamond as a middleman, to be honest. Like, I don't know why Marvel and DC don't distribute their own books. I've never really understood that. But... they signed a piece of paper, and it's all very technical, and I, yeah. It's weird. You know, speaking of monopolies, uh, we did just lose another major phone carrier in the United States due to a merger between Sprint and T-Mobile. Now it's just, oh, they merged? They, it went what? through like yesterday. Really? Yeah, it's now just T-Mobile. Which one are we losing? Because I, okay, I have T-Mobile. And Sprint, Sprint is the home awesome. provider. We were just we talking about how crappy Sprint was last week. Oh, I yeah. love Sprint. That's, that's I never had a problem <laughs> well, with Sprint. I guess Brandon wasn't here. I, 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 I never had a problem with Sprint. I had more problems with Singular back in the day when it was, you know, still Singular. But I had Singular, singular too, got at t right? They mm -hmm. did. They did. Yeah, there used to be yeah, Southwestern Bell, seen... Cellular One, uh, you know, Sprint, T-Mobile, uh, Boost Mobile. I think they're still around at, at Cricket, Wireless. We get less yeah. and less, but the big major companies, there's now three instead of four. So, and Sprint's That's local crazy. to where, where Cap and I live uh, at Overland Park. They, they built these sprawling headquarters in the late 90s and then promptly fired a bunch of people after it was built. So a lot of people in the comments right now are jokingly arguing about whether or not uh, there need to be more geek solution channels for uh, the uh, for the sake of competition, <laughs> yeah. and the answer to that is no, because geek solution is not the only thing of its kind, right? There's other channels that review 
movies and comics and things. Like you might say, oh, Geek Evolution is like so different from all the other ones, and it's always really nice when people say that. But we don't we don't need four Geek Evolutions because for, for competition, it's not really how that works. I'm, I'm At that point, it's just a chain. If you started eating like, up other reviewers on the internet, that would be different. Well, yeah, but that would be the opposite of what we're talking about, wouldn't it? Like, like, like at that point, we're not talking about competition. We're talking about a chain. That's the that's the other mm-hmm. thing. That's opposite. You'd be the Walmart of superhero reviews. <laughs> I'm sorry, what were you saying, Dan? I like Dweeb Evolution. I'm gonna start that channel. <laughs> Dweeb Evolution. Somebody said that in the comments. I yeah, like that. they're saying Dork Dork Evolution, Nerd Evolution, Dweeb Evolution. I think Nerd Evolution for for years. Like, how, I, I'm actually surprised nobody's ever made that channel. To be honest with you. Well, Nerdist is a big thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's uh, Chris. Uh, what's his face? Oh, I didn't know you were on a first name basis with him. Yeah. So the second one after that is Bag Studios, and he jumps off that one and says, "Is Monopoly a good game? And have you seen Ms. Monopoly?" Yeah, I, I saw I that. S- I saw that was a thing. That looked really what's, silly. What's Ms. Monopoly. This is another yeah, Monopoly thing they put out recently. Oh. It's like the old girl Monopoly. There's the there's what? that Monopoly. Because we gotta have that. There's that Monopoly well, you where can, you can girls like, play and... Monopoly. <laughs> Dan, he's gonna go on a rant. Dan rant. That's stupid. As soon as he mentioned Monopoly, <laughs> I, I, was, I was praying against hope that Ms. Monopoly was not in that, but it was. So There's a Monopoly where you can like go into debt and stuff, and you, like the idea is you can rack up a lot of debt and then not be able to pay it back, and I thought that was really kind of interesting. But I had Star Wars-themed Monopoly when I was younger, like around 98. Yeah, me too. 97, 98 or something, like when that was getting back into the, the culture and uh actually so funny i've been going through my garage i still have it but my mom when we would play it she would write everything (laughs) down on these sheets of paper and she would pack everything in envelopes and save our place in the game and this game is still saved from where we left it off in like oh two last time we played dj what are you doing right now Sorry, I was trying to, I was going to say I have the office monopoly and I have office on my shirt, yes. but then he started talking, so I was like, okay, I'm going to wait till he's done. So All right, about I'm going to just kept doing this, and I was like. <laughs> well, I, I was getting ready to speak, and then he, so he, he didn't I, stop. I, right. so, like, real quick, I want to weigh in on no, this, because like, no, I didn't no, actually get to talk about monopoly. Um, I never used to be a big monopoly person, and a few years ago, I got on kind of a kick where I wanted to play monopoly like all the time, because I wanted to see if I could get people to actually play monopoly right, which means trying to get a monopoly like knock people out of the game and take over the board like risk you get people that don't realize that's what you're supposed to do and will like get upset if somebody has to leave the game and will try to like come up with ways so that doesn't happen like you realize games have win conditions right that like a game isn't we play it for two hours and quit and who cares what actually happened on the board it's not how it works there are monopoly competitions like monopoly is a thing that doesn't have to take 19 hours guys that really know what they're doing can finish a monopoly game in less than two hours um and this is a thing i didn't realize until i saw a documentary on monopoly which changed my life when it comes to this game uh it's a it's a neat movie and everybody should go look at it but um <laughs> Have you guys ever played the card game version, Monopoly Deal? Because I highly recommend that if no, you have. It's very fun. I think we have it's very copy, fun. but I've never I didn't that. know that existed. But it's very fun. If, if I can jump on uh, this question, though, or do you have something to say, DJ? Did you have something no, no. to say? Oh. If I can jump on this <laughs> question, I, yeah, I'd like to ask, uh, what is each of yours guys' favorite board game? Oh. Could be anything. From the game Pandemic to... Uh, Never played that, but that would be the time. I Can I say it. a really boring answer? But it's... Sure. I don't play a lot of board games. Probably chess. Is that boring? <laughs> no, chess is a fun game. Chess is incredibly okay, that's, cool that's, because there's, that's there's, there's tons of ways to win chess. I'm self-conscious like... about my answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't be, DJ. That's cool. I mean, some things test the, stand the test of time for a reason. Uh, Dan, yeah, that's yeah. really cool. Do you have a favorite board game? I got this nice marble set. Like, Ooh. I gotta tell a quick story. Last year, I bought. We had a secret. We have. We do like a secret Santa for my wife's family every year, and you have to buy like a twenty-five dollar gift, and then you know where you steal. It's called different things: dirty Santa, white elephant, Yankee swap, all that. I bought a chess set from TJ Maxx. That was awesome. It was like made of wood. It was like handmade, and uh, and I really wanted it, so I bought it so that I could steal it for myself. And then someone stole it from me. So I was really bummed, and then her dad gave me this, my wife's dad gave me this awesome, like, marble sculpted chess set from, like, Greece that he got when That's they went cool. there. Wow. So it, 
it it worked out really well. It's awesome. I have a couple of really cool chess sets myself. Uh, I have a I have a glass one uh, that they put out a few years ago. It's really nice, it's frosted on for half of it and clear for the other half. And then I also have this one that I got when I worked at Savers, and it's a little round piece of wood, and it looks like a, like a gavel stand that you you'd hit a gavel on. But I realized when I saw it that it opened up, and when you opened it up, it has this felt inside, and it's got these little tiny little pieces on pegs that you put on the board, and it's really neat. That's awesome. Cool. Dan, what's your favorite board game? Uh, D&D and all variants thereof. Okay. That's true. I don't play. I haven't played those. I guess I'm going with Scrabble, but I wish I was better at Scrabble. My wife is like should be a Scrabble champion. I've told her for years she should go and play because she's so good, and it drives me insane. And she's very difficult to beat. There, I, I've never beaten her. Um, yeah. Somebody asked... Was, uh, Scrabble was also my answer. Oh, is it really? Yes, uh-huh. Div- Divid22 asked uh, how I think a Star Trek Monopoly would play. Well, obviously, there are Star Trek Monopolies. There's even a Klingon one. Is there really? Yeah, which is pretty cool sense. looking, but I, ne- I, never, I never got it. It was, it was during the 50th. And that they put it out, it was limited, and I I didn't have the money at the time when I was at the store when I saw it, and I, I really want to get my hands on that, but it's probably like $100 now. Okay, if, if you're going to do like a spinoff of a Star Trek thing, it's got to be Klingon, right? I guess. I mean, there's other things you could do, too. But anyway, uh, you could do a mirror one. That'd be pretty cool. Oh, um, be neat. But I mean, there's other things you could do. But anyway, um, the reason I wanted to answer this question is because uh, we had a couple of people in our Star Trek club years ago that actually made their own custom Star Trek Monopoly board. And it, it was uh, based on a game in Deep Space Nine at Cork's Bar called Tongo. Mm-hmm. And so it was a round Monopoly board because the Tongo wheel is round. And, and with the Tongo wheel, um, it, was a, it was a game, it was like a betting game, like at a casino. So so you had to spin it, and you had to put ships on the, the the board when you spun it. So they had a wheel that was on like a spinner that spun around. It was mm-hmm. so it was a, it was a, it was a monopoly board um, that was round and spun, and you had to play instead of with regular money <laughs> with Ferengi money. So it was. Um, like uh, latinum bars, strips, and slips, and they actually physically made the latinum bars, strips, and slips. It was really freaking cool, mm-hmm. uh, and that was that's one of the neatest custom things I've ever seen. I remember that. And they made it specifically I for the for... club. We did a game day every year, and they brought it every time. It was really neat. I forgot about that. Yeah, that is really cool. It was really neat. Wow. Did anyone ever play? There was a game. It was a Ninja Turtles board game that was like around the O three show era. That me and my brothers used to play all the time. It was really awesome. Do you ever play that? It's like on the streets. No. And you had to like get up up the street to um, Shredder's uh, like temple thing from that show. No, I never played that. That sounds cool though. Yeah, that was after really my cool. time. I, I didn't like... really see a lot of the merchandise for that show. I don't remember much about it, but I remember me and my brothers played the crap out of that game. We should that find awesome. it. We should try to get our hands on it. I just looked it up on Amazon. It's obviously not available anymore, but there's some people selling it like used. Well, we could find it on eBay. I yeah, will yeah. find it, Lara. I will find <laughs> it! Okay, uh, hey, DJ, how many more Super Chats do we have? We've got about 40 minutes left in the show. Yeah, we've only got 16 left, so... Are you serious? Whoa! Okay. 15, 15. We did the Miss, Miss hey, Monopoly Brandon, one. I really wanted to read Dan the Miss Monopoly description on Amazon, but I'll save it for after the show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can if you want to. You can. Go ahead, oh, go ahead, do it. Okay, here we go, here we go. <clears throat> <clears throat> Ms. Monopoly game. This breakout Monopoly game introduces Ms. Monopoly's niece, or Mr. Monopoly's niece, a self-made investment guru, here to update a few things. The game celebrates women investors as players move around the board collecting iconic things that wouldn't exist without women. (laughs) Wi-Fi, chocolate chip cookies, bulletproof vests, and the list goes on. This is the first game where women make more than men, but who are... Who you are is up to you. Wait, what? That didn't make any sense. Women make more than men, but who you are is up to you. Including unique tokens that represent an adventurous spirit of Miss Monopoly. Dear God. <laughs> See, Dan, I was really hoping it wouldn't come up. I didn't know it read quite like that, but you can take, you can glance at the box and see what the motivation was behind that. That yeah, sounds sorry. like a game that, that was designed by a person that has never interacted with a woman ever. <laughs> That's great. And when you go and see those on shelves, it always looks like they've never sold one. Of course it's, not. It seems like se- it's like it's like sexist 
it's trying to be feminist and it's sexist. The pieces are a wine glass, a dumbbell, like a like a little dumbbell, uh, a like a watch, and a yoga a... mat. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I would like That's... to get off this at yeah, the earliest Slay opportunity. <laughs> hey, Brandon, uh, we've got so many Super Chats left that I'm going to have to institute a new house rule for this evening, which is if you want to add an extra question, you owe me $5. Okay. That's, that's how that's, that's, that's going to work. Okay. I've only added the one extra question, right? So I only owe $5. No, no, from now on. You, know, oh, you okay. get the first one for free. I'm a first nice one's guy. free. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, look at this. Connor Nielsen is the next Super Chat. Thanks, Connor. How you doing, man? Uh, what's your favorite comic book story arc in an ongoing title? His is Morrison's three-part Club of Heroes mystery with J.H. Williams III in Batman. I'm, I'm sorry. I got distracted. A A Alex Barron, no men drink wine or do yoga. Sorry, can, can, you, can you read that again? <laughs> what is your favorite comic book story arc in an ongoing title? He says, mine is Morrison's three-part Club of Heroes mystery with J.H. Williams the third in Batman. I mean, I'm just always a broken record. I've always been nostalgic for Death of Superman, as everybody knows. I'm not going to say that's anything like the best thing, of course. Uh, no Man's Land remains way up there. Um, I like... Uh, what, else? What, 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 should I, what should I throw in there? Um, obviously, Simonson's Thor is way up there. Um, certain bits of Claremont that I've read are in there. Uh, Dan, what's your top, top thing? Is it Bendis Daredevil or is it something else? Uh, Stanley's Run on Amazing Spider-Man or Frank Miller on Daredevil. Those are my two favorites. Oh, Miller on Daredevil, even before Bendis. Okay. Oh, yeah. I like Miller better than Bendis. I like Bendis, but Miller is the definitive Daredevil run for me. Sure. I mean, yeah. It's the best. I also, I mean, it, like, the list can just go on and on, right? Like, I love Peter David on the Hulk, too. Um, you yeah, know, like... I'm, I'm struggling to not just say a thing I've said a thousand times, yeah. Yeah, and then, like, Whedon on X-Men is one of my favorite things, too. Like, I love that run. Um, I mean, the, the, the list can just go on and on and on. Like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I love the, the first half of Bendis' X-Men. I just never read the rest of it, so it's... But I, I was very invested in that for a while. Um, I like... Oh, Uncanny Avengers is a big one. That's that's that's, that's a good one too. Way up there, Rick Remender's run on Venom is one of, of my course. favorite things yeah. of recent years too. I mean, it's all uh, Donny Cates' stuff. Venom now. I would I would I would put up there. That book's really good. Um, Immortal Hulk is one of the best things being published right now, in my I opinion. Some of that I haven't done that yet, and of course, obviously Ninja Turtles. But I talk about Ninja Turtles all the time. Yeah. But if I had to pick one, it would be Stanley's run on Amazing Spider-Man, definitively. That's my favorite kind of ongoing story. I mean, it's like 100 issues long, and there's multiple smaller stories within it, but it is one ongoing story, the life of Peter Parker developing over the course of those 100 issues. It's fantastic yeah, stuff. Yeah, does it have to be a singular writer? Because I guess No Man's Land doesn't even count at that point. He, he just clarified in the chat saying he's talking about individual story arcs. Oh, arcs. So that's harder. That that's is, a lot yeah, harder. That is, that is a whole lot harder, sure. Um, but I would still put like the the end of No Man's Land in there. Uh, I would put the um, uh, Snyder's Black Mirror in there, which I actually have to review soon. I've never reviewed that, and somebody requested it, which is exciting because I love it. It's great. I think it's still maybe the best thing he he, he wrote, or it's it's way up there anyway. Um, my favorite story arc from uh, Stanley's run on Amazing Spider-Man is the. The ongoing storyline with Norman Osborn, like the the when we reveal his identity in issues 38 and 39, and then sort of after he gets amnesia, there's a whole plot that runs through a bunch of issues after that, and that's probably my favorite story arc. The, those old issues don't have story arcs, so it's weird to like oh, talk about that stuff. If you know? I'm going to go back that far, Dan, um, the one I'll throw out is the Galactus Trilogy. Yeah, Galactus Trilogy's good. It's good stuff. Yep. Uh, Death of Gwen Stacy would be in there if we're talking Spider-Man. Yeah, stuff. I mean that, that's that's amazing too. Of course, uh, I'm I'm a big fan of the uh, of the Venom stuff when uh, when McFarlane was there. Yeah, Michelinie's run on Spider-Man is really good. It's good stuff. We can do this all day. We just go back and forth and see which of us runs out. <laughs> <laughs> Bag Studios gives us a two dollar super chat. Thoughts on the fifty-two series of movies ending. Finally, 
That, that's exciting. I think I think we maybe talked about this last time. I can't remember. No, I'm glad that's happening. Uh, it's weird that it's lasted as long as it has. I'm sick of that aesthetic. I'm sick of the Vaseline on the lens. I'm sick of the... Um, I'm sick of <laughs> adapting stories that I love with uh, versions of characters that are generic that I don't like with voices that irritate me. I'm sick of doing that. Uh, and I'm sick of being expected to care about a continuity that hasn't even been all that continuitous. Like... Each a lot with a lot of those, each movie sort of feels like we might as well be starting over, or like they it, they they might be following up something from before, but those events don't really affect it all that much. The Batman movie is less so, um, and of course, like there are some sequels to things that sort of deal with what happened before, but like by and large, the only one that does anything really cool with that continuity is uh, is uh, Suicide Squad Hell to Pay, which is actually really good. Uh, their their uh, Justice League Dark movie was pretty good. They're getting a sequel to that. Um, but, like, I just don't care about that as a continuity. I'm not invested in it at all. And they ruin story arcs that if they uh, adapted without that, like, it would be... They would probably have been better just by virtue of having to go with something closer to the characters the way they were in the comic or having to reinvent them. Now, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I said at the beginning of all these things way back in the day, or, like, I, it was three years after, because I start in 09, 2010... Uh, and the directed video movies started with uh, Superman Doomsday. And I said back then, sometimes they're trying to adapt things or telling stories. It's kind of weird to, like, have to introduce characters with the story. That Like, adapting Death of Superman without a pre-established Superman is a really strange notion. Like, I, I, I thought that was weird when Tim Burton was going to do it. It's like, that sounds like your third story, not your first story. Like, let's get to know the guy for a while. And and, and it just kind of screams, Superman's an iconic character that everybody knows, so you could introduce him to everyone and kill him at the same time. No, it's still weird. I know, like, like I, I, don't, I don't love that. And so... I do like the idea of having maybe a continuity of those movies where we get to know these characters and then we can do some of those cool stories, but that one sucks, so I don't want to see those things happen in that. <laughs> Considering I've seen maybe one of those, I am glad they're ending. <laughs> because maybe I'll be more interested in what they're putting out. I was excited about yeah. the Superman Red Sun one, but it the, all the trailers made it look like a modern like let's crap on donald trump fest so i was like yeah i'm not interested in this <laughs> everything that i initially thought that comic was which is why i didn't read it for the longest time and then when i finally read it i was like oh this is millar at his most mature and then i watched that movie and i said this is like millar is millar is least mature and, and, and millar didn't write that so i like that's not at his feet but um it was it was the mateus who wrote that but like yeah, I saw in the trailer, like, the USA Superman being, like, America first. I was just like, this yeah. is so stupid. Oh, did they put that why in the trailer? Does... Oh. Yeah, I was like, why does everything we make have to be about Donald Trump? I don't yeah. like Donald <laughs> Trump, but why does everything we make have to be about crapping on him? Like, let's... <laughs> it's so annoying. It's like, we get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you beat a dead horse with social commentary for too long and it becomes really numb and if the social commentary is important that's dangerous now let's well, they don't on. Have any... i'm done so much <laughs> they, don't, they don't have anything new or interesting to say you know that's what it is yeah and i, I just yeah. think yeah and that becomes really problematic for me if like if we keep repeating it over and over it doesn't mean anything anymore you know maybe those yeah, things exactly. needed to be said for a minute and yeah, we get it now like... or at least say it's all right we got a Super chat from DTWO98. I don't immediately recognize that name. Or it's not as it's not on here as much, so thanks for your super chat. Rank Spider-Man Blue, Daredevil Yellow, Hulk Gray, and Captain America White. That's a cool question. Okay, yeah, that's neat. It's difficult because I've never read Hulk Gray. Have you ever read that, Dan? I have, yes. Is it any good? Um <laughs> it's fine. I it's good for what it is, but it's like so, like, the, all of the things that Peter David does with the Grey Hulk in his run are really interesting, and what Loeb does with the Grey Hulk in that is much less interesting. Well, it's Loeb. has to be expected. I mean, but I really like Daredevil Yellow and Spider-Man Blue. I think those books are, like, genuinely really great. So, um, I was dis I mean, just in comparison, I guess, to those two, I like it a lot less. I, I would wholeheartedly recommend people look at Daredevil Yellow and Spider-Man Blue because I think they're amazing. Um, but the Hulk Gray, less so. I, I didn't think it was... It wasn't my favorite thing. If you haven't read Peter David, like, maybe you'd like it, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Is it even... 
would you even get it if you hadn't read it? Is it one of those things where like it's only for people that have read it, but it's also not good? Because <laughs> that happens. No. Oh, okay. No. Okay. Not at all. No. Okay. Interesting. Um, I read Daredevil Yellow a million years ago and loved it back then, but I also loved Hush when I first read it, and I loved Long Halloween when I first read it, so I don't trust that. I need to go back to it. Uh, what I <laughs> Strangely, read, the... What I read of Captain America White was actually really pretty solid, uh, but I only read half of it, and I haven't gone back to it. So I guess at yeah, the that, moment, that's, that's the... the top of that. But I, I loved Daredevil <laughs> Yellow when I first read it. Uh, Spider-Man Blue, I've never, I've never read. i got to do that at some point. And Hulk Gray, I've also never read. I've sold Hulk Gray, but I've never actually read it. Strangely, the only one I have is Captain America White. I, I really like that. I really, yeah, I have the trade of it just because I found it super cheap at like a used uh, bookstore. That, that used bookstore that I took you at, Cap, or I took you to. I w- oh cool. I found yeah. it there. I I would consider that is that was a neat place. I would consider <laughs> uh, sitting down and reading all of those and doing a video linking them. I think that would be a cool idea, and that's a neat notion. So I might yeah, it was a cool together. question. Maybe, maybe see if I can get a panel of guys to do that with me at some point. <laughs> and that'd be really cool if I could get um, Dan and Eric. Um, that would be a really good me and Dan and, and, and Eric video. Although Eric would probably be like, yeah. I don't want to read that. <laughs> <laughs> so that might be just a me and Dan video at, so, at some point. Yeah, maybe, it may be six years from now, but it's a cool idea. Maybe someday we'll do it. All right, go ahead. All right, John Ty again hops in with a super chat. Which oh, characters thanks, would you switch from Marvel to DC and vice versa. That's always that's a classic question. That's always a fun question. Let's let Dan field it first. Uh, I don't know that I really would switch any of them to be honest. No, I like them kind of where they are. <laughs> um, filibustering. Captain Logan. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I just don't like DC as much as I like Marvel, so I don't want to lose any of the Marvel characters to DC really. Um, <laughs> I guess I guess I would give Deadpool to DC because then I wouldn't have to look at it. <laughs> and well, you could, then... you could the other way would be cool. You can get a Marvel version of a, a DC character. I guess maybe we could replace Namor with Aquaman because I like Aquaman and I think Namor is a douche nozzle. <laughs> <laughs> can you say that on Geek Evolution? I don't even know. I don't know. Say. I gotta call the censors on that. I don't even know if you. Cap talked that. about about getting laid earlier so i get one <laughs> it's fair i didn't use profanity of any kind i don't know that that actually is qualifies du- as is profanity, profanity? i don't even know no that's what I, that was the question i don't even know it's just part of the yeah bottle, it's just right? an object it's, it's just a count? yeah it's just a product no Dan, if you get offended by women's fem uh cleanliness <laughs> products you are sexist sir Hey Dan, I, I honestly don't actually care. I, I, I think I think that was actually one of the pieces in Ms. Monopoly. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That was an after dark oh, oh. kind of thing. To... Wow! Oh. This group, we cannot see. I wouldn't have said that if it was the thing I said earlier. If it was just me and DJ, it's because you guys showed up. Hey. It's just a product. You can buy them at the grocery store. <laughs> it's just a product. Um, that's a difficult question. So. I think there's two different ways to look at this question because I have to overly complicate everything. Uh, the, there is the way Dan looked at it, which is uh, if we're playing like a game of uh, who do you want on your team and you're like switching things up, like who would I give the uh, to, to the other company and they have them forever. And the other thing is, is just sort of like who would be like really interesting to show up there. And I guess that turns into sort of a crossover sort of question. But I mean like what character, if they existed in that other universe, would feel fit well there if they hadn't been in the first one like 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 is, is i think the the, the the kind of more interesting way to look at that and i just think superman in marvel is a really interesting notion like take or really take any of the really like stalwart iconic like initially does no wrong kind of characters and put them in the more shades of gray kind of world that marvel usually is and what happens to those characters like superman arguably is able to retain his altruism and uh, his values more easily in a world where things go his way more often. But if he went to the Marvel Universe where Spider-Man gets screwed all the darn time, would he be able to retain those things? Is that harder for him uh, if, if Superman goes to Marvel? So, like, I, I think he would be the, the character for me that would be most interesting to see in that universe. And you can say, well, Captain America is so much like Superman. Yeah, but, like, he's a soldier guy, right? Like, it is like like I'm not saying that he has compromised values, uh, exactly. But um, I don't know. I think it's harder to be Superman than it is to be Captain America, overall. 
even though Cap said earlier, Superman kills people. Well, in more modern things where he has to, you know, your, your traditional Superman never has to do just that. Like, just like Captain America. He's fighting Nazis. He's going to yeah, kill people. He is. He's fighting Nazis. Nazis. William Shatner. <laughs> But he, was I heard fighting, but he was fighting Nazis and killing people during a period when uh, Superman was Golden Age and Stalwart and didn't have to. Although maybe he did too, honestly. I guess I don't know that for sure. Superman's throwing planets around in the Golden Age. He definitely killed at least some aliens <laughs> doing that. I was trying to get aliens questions people. to you. I don't know. Speaking <laughs> of, dude, I'm, I'm going to use that as a segue to John Ty's Super Chat. Why is Superman the best of us when he isn't human? I don't know. Dan doesn't like my responses, so I'll let, I'll let Dan go first. Um, as someone that's not a huge Superman fan, um, I Dan, think... I don't even agree with the premise. <laughs> I mean, like, not that I dislike Superman. I just like I haven't read a ton of Superman things, so I have very little investment in him as a character. I I like him well enough, but he's not one of my favorites. Um. I think that he's, like, designed to be an aspirational figure, um, something that, you know, people look up to. He's supposed to be infallible, I guess. That's kind of, like, the point of the character. Um, that's why I think people, a lot of people reacted so negatively to Man of Steel because it was, like, you know, Superman brought down to Earth. Um, so I guess, like, you know, it, Superman at its core it was, was designed as, like, a power fantasy for, like, 10-year-olds, you know? It's, like, it's like uh it's like a guy that, you know, has all this power. He can do whatever he wants. Um, I think maybe that's what people see in him. I don't know. Um, yeah. I, but like I, the pub, does the public know he's an alien? Is that like public knowledge? I'm sure it is at some point. Yeah, in, in they the do. They do. Like Lex Luthor's like whole thing is like, um, oh, like Superman is, uh, is bad for humanity because he, um, he like, you know, he's an alien that's coming and solving humanity's problems so they don't learn how to like solve those problems themselves, which I think is interesting. Um, yeah. And Superman and Batman are kind of like the same thing for me. Like, I think the characters around those two characters are more interesting to me than the like characters themselves. Um, like, I, I like Lex Luthor more than I like Superman. Like, I think he's more interesting, but that's just my two cents. I don't know. I also don't don't disagree with that. I mean, Lex is like my favorite character in DC Comics, probably next to Batman. So, really? Yeah, that's awesome. Um, people ask me that question all the time, and I think I've finally been able to answer. Well, I think it's because people always ask me the superhero thing. They don't ask character. You know what I mean? Like, I like yeah, I love I love Lex. I I think it's just a, a, it's similar to what they do in Star Trek, where they talk about their uh, humanity and, and the humanity of other alien races. They're not humans. You know, they have their own thing, but I think it's tendency for humans to imprint their ideas and their ideals upon other things that they see themselves in. Something like that. Well, and Super lines. I meant to say this a minute ago, like Superman wasn't ever intended to be a relatable character. He was supposed to be like Dan said, somebody that you aspired to be and like that then that's why he said like to like like ten year old power fantasy. Um I think he can I, I think you can have your cake and eat it too on that to some degree. I think it's possible for Superman to be somewhat of a relatable human character and also not make like the sorts of mistakes that you just absolutely can never come back from. I think it's possible to have both. I think he can, he can I think he can be a be a human being and constantly be challenged to give up his his virtues and screw up and just and and, and like he actually make mistakes but never to the point of no return um and i i've, I've said this recently but uh people like to say well superman can't exist uh it be, because there's nobody like that in real life and so we shouldn't write him that way and i give you fred rogers and like i don't know they, like there have been people that have existed that get really close to that. And so like if Fred Rogers could exist, Superman can exist. That's I'm, I'm, I'm standing by that. All right. Fred Rogers uh, didn't have vision. Have... So if Fred Rogers had think... vision, I guess I don't know, but I think someone should make a realistic Superman comic where Superman looks like Fred Rogers, like not even muscly. He's just like Fred Rogers in a Superman costume. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Does that Superman wear a sweater? People, people are casting face? us in the in the in the chat. They're casting Someone said us. Grant Gustin, Grant Gustin for Dan, Brandon Routh as DJ. I don't think Brandon's got anybody yet. Grant That's Gustin fun. is a really good choice for Dan. Like you guys have similar builds and faces. Like I can totally see that. Pretty good. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Who, that's who is that? Is that the Flash? Oh, I love. Show? Yeah, that's the. Yeah, that's sorry. That's that's the Flash in the CW show. Um, the, uh, Tyler Overall 
Michael Keaton motion capture as Captain Logan in the Game Evolution biopic. That's the best idea I've ever heard. But motion capture, yeah, it's fantastic. It's funny because the first time I was ever on camera with Eric, he said I looked like, um, what's that actor's name from This Is Us? He's also in Rocky Six. He plays his son. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Milo, Milo Vermeanga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Milo. Some Milo crazy name. He, That's the first thing. He holds his mouth like this like all the time. I did the Infinity you do War. Like uh, spoiler. Yeah. And the very first, the, the, right when the camera went off, we went off live, Eric said, DJ, you look like a combination of Tom Holland and Milo Vimera. Yeah. And that, that How do you me. say that guy's name? I have like... no idea. <laughs> okay. I thought there, you were joking. Spell... No, it's Ventimiglia, I, I think is how you say it. I think. Ventimiglia. I think that's right. <laughs> but I've never us. totally known, so I was just going Ventimiglia. Just Ventimiglia. Short. Yeah. You just call him Milo. Milo V. <laughs> I love oh, they're, now they're like Magilla. enunciating it in the chat for us. Oh, no, it's what I said. Venta Magilia. 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 Venta Magilia. That's what I said, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> really cool uh, Zim, speaking of never ending stories, which we were doing like never two, two hours. Oh, and we've also had <laughs> many of those this Yeah, that's true. He says if the ideally eternal conflict between Batman and Joker had to end, what would be the definitive conclusion to you? I've gotten this recently. I don't have a great answer to this question. Anybody else want to weigh in? Because I just have never liked my response to this. Like, how, like, how do you, how do you want to see that end? How do you want to see Batman or the or the Joker or both die or whatever? Like, because for me, that's a relationship that's not meant to end. So it's difficult for me to come up with like a really great, satisfying conclusion for that. Well, if you go with, like, the, the things that those characters are, like, supposed to represent, like, in the modern things anyway, like, order versus chaos, like, the thing you'd want to see happen is, like, them just eventually die off and two other people take over those roles Absolutely. in the world of Gotham, yeah. you know? Like, not even necessarily a Batman, a bat or clown-based character. Like, something, like, two two people would, would come up and... And take those roles, I suppose, eventually. You just need two opposing archetypes, right? You, you, yeah, you need, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you, you need a magnet and an anti-magnet. Like, that's, you know, that repel each other. That's what you need. Yeah. Um, but as far as, like, the actual way that you would see that go down, like, like if, if you did the Marvel thing, like, if it was Batman the end, you know, what exactly does that look like? I don't know if it's possible to do it much better than the end of Arkham City. I think it did, it, it did that pretty well. Yeah, Arkham City's great. Did you hear, by the way, that um, they're bringing back um, the Batman the Animated Series comic book with Deanie and Alan Burnett writing it? Holy friggin' crap. No, I did not know that. That's very Yeah, they exciting. announced it today. <gasps> I hope they... You know what I want them to do? I want them to uh, adapt some more recent things like in the Batman the Animated Series aesthetic. I think it was so cool. Like, what does yeah. Joker Who Laughs look like in that show? Or Batman Who That's, Laughs look like yeah. in that show? I think it would be so cool. That would be cool. Stuff like that. Wow. I'd be down. Well, that's the best news I've heard all day. You just... <laughs> <laughs> I, f I feel so good now, Dan. Wow, I didn't know about that. <laughs> Is there a storyline... You're welcome. Is there a storyline where Batman You're retires? welcome! <laughs> where Batman retires? Yes. Well, yeah, it would be called uh, Dark Knight Returns... And then uh, he's retired, and then he comes back, like, years later as, like, an old guy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Dark, Dark Knight Returns is, like, the most famous I... Batman story there is. It's Frank Miller. It's... it's, like, the okay. third famous, yeah. the third most yeah. famous graphic novel of all time. Of, of all time. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Sorry, Brandon's buddy. inner monologue is just show. shouting, um, just shouting profanity at Captain Logan. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I did that because I knew the viewers would. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'll, I'll hand it to you. You can read it. Okay. There's also uh, Batman right. Beyond, My... where uh, Bruce Bruce Wayne is like 80 years old and has been retired for a mm. long time because he almost used a gun on someone and said never again. It's one of the best pilots of anything. It's so cool. And the Crisis crossover where Kevin Conroy plays Batman, and he looks 80. <laughs> Can we not talk about that anymore? <laughs> I'm so depressed about the way they handled that. 
let's finally put Kevin Conroy on screen physically as Batman and make him the least likable, most hateful, horrible Batman of all time. Even next to uh, uh, All Star Batman, Robin Batman. Even worse than that. Didn't think it was possible. Wait, Kevin Conroy has now played that. He's worse than that. Yeah, he's a mass That's... murderer. Oh. He killed. Oh. He killed everyone. Oh, that's that's weird. People like it. I don't know why. Because it was a thing they know, and they clapped. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Me personally, I don't want to make fun of anybody in the comments that actually enjoyed that because I know people really did. But what the said is pretty funny. Um, <laughs> all right, let's move on. See, I always do that. I always go. Can we not talk about them? And I go. We're talking about them. Uh, Twelve minutes left on the Captain Logan show. How many? Super chats are left, sir. Five, six, seven, eight. Well, we're out of double digits. <laughs> Woohoo! All right, Miles Smith. With the one year anniversary of Endgame coming up. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, what what do you think Avengers three and four would have looked like if Joss Whedon was still directing? Well, I mean that's <laughs> Yeah, that's that's uh, super hard to say. Um, I think the bi- the biggest thing is that Thanos would have been closer to comic book Thanos, uh, and it would have been more comic booky in general. I imagine if they allowed him to do what he would have wanted to do with that. Um, I think he would have more closely adapted Infinity Gauntlet. Like I think he would have put more stuff from that book in that, and I think Thanos would have had motivations that I understood but that the general audiences wouldn't have been as excited about because they found him relatable. I didn't think that worked, but that's just me. Um, I think I personally would have liked Joss Whedon's Thanos because the one he wrote for five seconds at the end of the Avengers was um, Thanos, and I was kind of excited to see him get to do that, and then we didn't get... um, Thanos. So that's that's the biggest thing I would have wanted to, to, to see what he did with, uh, and and the and the biggest difference. Um, I don't know if those movies would have been necessarily less sappy because Joss Whedon also likes to go to those places sometimes. So who knows? And I don't know if Endgame would have necessarily been less of a uh, like greatest hits of our universe movie either. I think he also could have maybe done that, maybe done it a little bit better than it was done. Um, but yeah, hard to say because honestly, going back to Winter Soldier, I wouldn't have thought those guys would be responsible for that kind of thing either. But yeah, I definitely wouldn't have thought that the humor, that his humor would have been in their movie as much. But it's Some weird how that worked out. The sheer number of cooks that were in that kitchen. Uh, we know that a yeah. lot of that a lot of directors and writers. Uh, from those various movies came in to work on that movie. And that movie is essentially directed and written by a bunch of different people that don't necessarily get director writer credits. So there is that to keep to, to keep in mind. Um, so like it, it is, and you think about how huge those movies are, especially Endgame, like they, they, that's going to be more of a collaborative effort than they ever had. Of course, they're going to do it that way. Uh, but I think that's mm-hmm. what led to unfortunate choices like Fan Thor and things like that. Duh. Yeah, I mean, I think at the very least, my two favorite characters wouldn't have been ruined. Um, but uh, yeah, I think Endgame. I liked uh, Avengers: Infinity War a lot. Um, I think that's why I was so disappointed with Endgame because it was just, hey, look, we've made a lot of movies, aren't we cool? The movie, and um, <laughs> I don't think Joss Whedon would have done that as much because I think he has a, 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 he has more of an imagination than that. And, um, I would have liked to see what he would have done. Um, I think the characters would have been a little bit more consistently written throughout the course of the MCU generally. Um, cause he, we know he worked on like first Avenger before the Avengers came out. And, um, I think him being the, the showrunner of the MCU, uh, would have resulted in in something a little bit closer to what I would have liked to have seen. Because he loves those characters. I mean, he he's written for Marvel Comics before. We know he's read. He grew up with that stuff. He loves it. So, um, yeah. I'm not that I'm a huge fan of Age of Ultron or anything. Because I think I think that movie's a little too bloated. But I don't know if that's yeah. even necessarily his fault either. Um, so it is and it isn't. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Really. Um, at the very least, that he's the one who pushed for that movie being as short as it is, and that was a mistake. So, like, if that's true, yeah, well, I, I, put, I put that at his feet. Because uh, he said, I just think that it needs to be the same length as the last movie. And I'm like, then that's not the story you tell, buddy, because you needed another half an hour. 
Yeah. Yeah. But I heard that he didn't like a lot of the stuff, like, in terms of, like, sequel debate that they made him shove in that movie, too, which is That's weird true. that he, like... I don't know. It's a, it's a whole thing, so... Um, I do miss Joss Whedon because I think I too. Um, the humor that he puts in his movies is very like specific and it works when he writes it, but not so much when other people do necessarily. Well, and that's the um, problem is that it's permeated not just Marvel, but the whole culture ever since Buffy. So you have hundreds of people trying to do his humor, not knowing how to do it. And he, you almost always have to be Whedon in order to pull that off. So like, it's it becomes problematic in lots of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But Eric complains about this all the time that like Whedon is responsible for ruining the language. <laughs> like, I don't know if I'd go English. that far. But... <laughs> and it's a really interesting argument he makes. I'm not going to make it for him, but that's that that's a that's a that's a thing he suggests. Um, yeah, I think I think we should also Dan for a second look at the the kind of kind of climate and uh, where Whedon was in his life uh, when he left Age of Ultron and, and consider that aspect of it too. Like, if he's at his absolute peak and not burn out, I think you're right about what the quality of those movies were. If he had decided to stick around after the way he felt after Age of Ultron... It could have not been that way. I, like they, like they, 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 they could have, they could have ended up being, um, like weirdly, uh, you know, convoluted or something, just because his heart wasn't in it. It's possible, and this is just my opinion, guys. I know there's people that love Rises, but I think we could have had like a Nolan Rises situation where he was just there making a movie he didn't seem to really have his heart in. Uh, that that's a that's a worry I would have had if he'd stuck around. That's he really possible. didn't want to be there anymore, and he left, and that was the smart move. But it it hurt the the MCU overall, I think, to some degree. I like Endgame more than you do. I think that could have been a much better movie, and you have to go in already with a Thanos I don't like. So, like, I already had difficulty with that. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. Like, we have the complete opposite opinions on those movies. It seems like, like, I loved the first one. You're like, ah, I didn't really like the first one. And then, like, the second one, you're like, oh, I love that one. I'm like, ah, I didn't really. What with Endgame? Like no, that. that's not true at all. That's not true even I, at all. I thought you, I thought you liked Endgame. When I first saw it, I was, I, I was, I was kind of on cloud nine because of some some of the fan service stuff I really actually liked. Um, I enjoy watching that movie. It's not held up on multiple viewings. Um, Oh, okay. Certainly. Uh, I think Infinity War is a much better piece. I think they're both hurt by a Thanos that doesn't work. Um, a lot of my issues sure. with Endgame are, are my issues with, with, with Infinity War in the first place. Uh, and Endgame gets sloppy in a way Infinity War doesn't. Um, like, I can't get past weird stuff like how come Thanos is wearing the gauntlet after the gauntlet doesn't do anything anymore. Like, just so that we can see it get cut off, his, get his hand cut off wearing it. That's so dumb. Like, he's doing dishes wearing it. First of all, <laughs> yeah. that's a, that's a really impractical that. thing to be doing. You're wearing this big gauntlet. You can't even hardly move your fingers and you're doing the dishes. And then and then they show up, the Avengers show up and, and, and Thor or whoever, like, cuts your, your arm off just because that's what they should. And then... That's made even dumber by the fact that, like, it's almost like between those movies, and they sort of wrote those together, So, and, and we're shooting them back-to-back, -back, so I don't know how this is possible, but it's almost like they heard fan complaints that uh, they were stupid enough to just stand there and try to pull his glove off him while Mantis is trying to put him to sleep instead of just cutting off his arm. The first thing they do in the next movie is cut his arm off, and you're like, you know what? If you guys had done this before, we wouldn't even need this movie. So he's there doing the dishes, wearing the gauntlet, but isn't that after he already destroyed the stones and it nearly killed that's him? That's what I just said. Yeah. That's that's what I mean. He's still wearing the gauntlet, when the gauntlet doesn't do anything oh, anymore. Yes, okay. What is the uh, point? Why does he still have it? Like, yeah, why is exactly. it on him? And, he, and, and, and also, what's made on It's there for an image. And that's the, the well, biggest uh, issue I have. Everybody's... Sorry. What's that? Everybody's saying in the comments when he, when he used the gauntlet, it like, it, like, burned and, like, melted to his flesh, and he can't. Take it off. They did, I've heard like, people suggest that. They did not make that clear enough in the film, I don't think. Um, if that's what happened, we somehow need exposition about it because I don't I can't tell that's what happened. And furthermore, isn't it weird that like the I used the stones to destroy the stones, which I also <laughs> think is a weird thing that you shouldn't really be able to do, but whatever. I used the stones to destroy the stones, and then the glove's still on your hand. Like, why didn't it destroy the glove? 
and the also, very least. And also the stones created reality. I would think themselves. that would be enough. Well, then that's a whole other ball of wax I don't even want to get into because, yeah, that, and then my brain explodes. And then whoosh. Um, <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. No. Um. It, I, I mean, on on yeah, on further review, Dan. Like, Infinity War is, is certainly the, be- the the much better film of the two. I like. I still like Endgame better than you in that. Like, I I will sit down and watch it. Um. But I think Infinity War is a better movie. And uh, I don't. I'm with you. I don't like. I don't like that. Right after the best Thor movie we got, we get the worst Thor movie. Um. Or movie for Thor. Oh, you, oh, okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just mean, like, Thor was the coolest he's ever been in Infinity War, and then we get him in Endgame, and he's yeah, the he worst he's ever that. been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's hard It's hard that, to say that Ragnarok is not the worst. Well, it, I think, I don't know. I just like Ragnarok more than, than uh, Endgame, but I don't know if he's worse in that than he is in Endgame. Oh, well, if yeah, that's the uh... case, they're right on par, buddy. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I don't know which one he annoyed me more in. Um... Five five nine zero ERS Cap and Dan, what are your favorite X Men writers? <laughs> I think he means who. Well, we're not playing Jeopardy. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, the the uh, you know Claremont is the, is the godfather of X Men. None of the the writers that come after him would have a job if it wasn't for him. Um, <laughs> they right. just play with they just play with Claremont's toys, really. Um, but I also uh, really like Morrison. I really like um, Joss Whedon. I really like Jason Aaron. I really like um, uh, what I read of Matt Fraction's run. There were some cool parts. I really like Vendis. Um, the the X Men have had a lot of uh, great writers. So yeah, I mean, the, the 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 obvious answer is Claremont, though. I mean, he he is. Did everything X Men sprung from that guy's imagination? He's incredible. Yeah, Claremont is easily uh, the best world builder, but that's partly because nobody's allowed to do too much world world building after him. Because a, he's created so much, everybody wants to play with it, and b, it's like, what is the point of making much more? He invented six billion characters. Um, so like, I think Claremont is easily the best, um, like the most important writer for X-Men and the best world builder. Um, I find a lot of his stuff difficult to go back to because it's so wordy and, uh, like I need to go back and read all of that and I just have a hard time getting in the mood for it. Um, that's a thing that I don't think is dated real well for me. Uh, right now it's Hickman. Uh, the, the, the new Hickman stuff I've read is, is insanely good and it's going to be the thing that everything is built on for the next 10 years. It's going to be Frank Miller's Daredevil all over again. Uh, so it's, it's wonderful. It's, it's real special. But, um, as Dan said, like all, everybody Dan brought up, uh, I agree with, except for Jason Aaron. I'm not a big fan of his, of, of his X-Men. Um, some of it's just different sensibilities, but, uh, and I think, I can't remember if he wrote Schism or not. I think he wrote Schism and Schism is really bad. Uh... But, uh, I think he did write Schism, but I didn't hate it as much as you seem to, um, from what I remember anyway, but I haven't read it in a long time. Sure. All right, guys, we have an unprecedented event. This is this is a beautiful picture of, of people coming together in the midst of the coronavirus, coronavirus tragedy. Azim's next question is another person's question. He <laughs> says, he says, he gives a super chat. Five dollars he pays. Question from Donnie St. Pierre. Cap, I recently started going through all of HP Lovecraft's work. Any thoughts on his stuff? So he sacrificed his super chat for Donnie St. Pierre. Hopefully that's, you're still watching Donnie St. Pierre. Yeah, that that uh, I've never seen that happen. No. In like almost first time. hundred shows, I've never seen that happen. I that question went a completely different direction than I thought it was going to. Because I, I said H, I thought it was HBO something, and then it turned into HP Lovecraft. And I, uh, I I wish I had an answer. I've never read any HP Lovecraft. Obviously, I've seen his iconography Ooh. affecting everything, and that's a big Eric thing. Um, I wish he was here right now. Eric's a big fan of Lovecraft, uh, you know, Cthulhu and all that stuff, but I'm not a Lovecraft guy, so I can't really speak on that. Um, I've never tried to sit down and read his stuff. Uh, I have some of it in my library. I've just never gotten around to it. Mm. Well, sorry, your sacrifice was kind of a waste, <laughs> but it was a, it's a very kind gesture. Um, T Edge one five dollar super chat. You didn't upset me. Uh, I guess he was talking about what, what did you? How did you upset someone earlier in the? In the, in the, I, in the, in the I said so, oh, I I think it had something to. I, I think it was about the whole never any story three thing. I think he was the guy that brought that. Oh, okay, okay. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, you didn't upset me. And then he says, is there any similarities between the outbreak and the blip? Oh, I'm Who really you guys glad think... that, he didn't, uh, that he didn't give a super chat just to say we're all good, man. I'm <laughs> glad he didn't feel the need to give us money for that, yeah. Okay, so he has two questions. The first one is, uh, any similarities between the outbreak and the blip? I got that question on the, uh, uh, on the chat today um, in the Discord and answered that from somebody. Uh, so if either of you guys wants to take that, feel free to. Sorry, what was the question? Any similarities <laughs> between the outbreak and the blip? So he's talking about the coronavirus versus the end of Infinity War. COVID-19 versus the snap. I mean, hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully it's not half of the world. world. <laughs> I mean, it's similar in that a lot of people are dying, I guess. One of the things that um, someone no mentioned in the, in the Discord last night, I think it was Thomas Edgehill, he was talking about how um, he thought it was similar in that a lot of states are proposing that the kids that um, did weren't able to finish their school year in school are going to have to repeat the year again just oh, like wow. the kids in Spider-Man uh, Far From Home did. Yeah. Um, so that's potentially one similarity that I didn't think of. But, um, yeah, I can't take credit for that one. Wouldn't it be crazy that's if like they just repeat the semester the and then from now on the year starts at a different time? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like the school year? <laughs> so I've heard that, yeah. that some are basically taking the third quarter of grades and making them the fourth quarter grades. Okay. Uh -huh. just, that's what I've heard locally. <laughs> that's weird because it's like you just didn't have to go to class so yeah it's just education is canceled learning canceled but i also don't <clears throat> know that it's fair to make them repeat the entire year so you know like you hold back the the entire country by a year wouldn't that be wild it's like basically we all went through developmental first grade yeah it's and then really the uh just... there's a second part to his question uh, what do you guys think slash want the big bad for the next set of MCU films to be? Like the Thanos. Real quick, I, I um, since you guys, wait, I want to mention one thing I said in, in the Discord yeah, yeah. question, um, just so that the other folks get to hear it, which is um, the biggest difference, besides the fact that it's not going to wipe out half of us, hopefully, is the, uh, is the idea that that was all at once, and this is over time, which I think is, is, is almost worse. Uh, because like you don't you don't know right away who it's going to affect and how the uncertainty of it makes it kind of harder to deal with than just watching everybody you know half of the world disintegrate at the same time. That's that's the biggest difference that I see. Hmm. That was and nice we have no, and, uh, we have... and, uh, uh, depressing. Let's move on. Yeah. So who do you think should be the <laughs> next big bad in the Marvel universe? I know what Dan wants. I want Norman Osborn. I know the be... other one Dan wants too. Oh, I was oh. gonna say Kang. Is that? Yeah, that's thinking? the other one Dan wants. Okay. <laughs> Kang would be a cool guy too. I like <laughs> Conquer a lot. Um, Sorry, I thought you'd say yeah, that before. I would really like. Um, I don't know. I'd really like a Spider-Man villain to be the 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 guy that kind of like because in Secret Invasion, what happens is. Um, Norman Osborn kills the Skrull Queen in front of everyone, and, like, nobody knows he's the Green Goblin, obviously, so he becomes, like, a, you know, national hero and becomes the leader of S.H.I.E.L.D. and all of these things and, like, basically <laughs> takes over the Marvel Universe. I would like to see um, Norman Osborn uh, maybe be a politician in this. This still has connections to Oscorp, and that's, like, the, the, what, the reason why he's, like, such a powerful figure and stuff, um, and have him do something, because, like, they're obviously building to some sort of thing with the Skrulls eventually, um, based on what they do in Captain Marvel, so and the fact that they show up in um, in Far From Home, so uh, maybe we could do something with that. I mean, I don't know how possible that is with the whole Sony deal thing, but I that's ideally what I would like to see in the future. I would like Doom. Doom would be cool Doom too. Could be cool. Doom is uh, the granddaddy of Marvel villains, so he would also he would also be great. I love Doom. Okay, uh, what I want is not a new villain, but a reinvention of a villain. What I want is, well, there's actually several of those. Stilt I would do, man? But no. Wait, no, we haven't done that yet. We haven't even done that. You're not paying attention to what I'm saying. <laughs> what, what I want 
is for uh, the X-Men to get established and to do a couple of X-Men movies. And then Red Skull comes back and steals Professor Xavier's brain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Well, well, they couldn't get the, the main actor to come back because he's 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 not going to come back unless he makes triple what no, he made. The la- in- a, the last guy was fine, and B, well, yeah, like the like the what's his face? The original actor could have gone that over the top, and it would have been wonderful. Could you imagine him holding up Xavier's brain? It would just just been the absolute. And, then hey, I, for, and for, if I don't get that shot, I don't want it done. If you're not going to go far enough to actually have the I have Xavier's brain, that is my favorite. <laughs> image in comics now is I have Xavier's brain. It's the best. I really want the actor interpretation of that line. <laughs> I want to so, see someone... In a German I accent, see... no less. Yeah. I want to see a, a, a villain in, in, in a family Disney movie holding a throbbing, bleeding brain <laughs> on screen. Out of a geriatric man's head. Yeah. Uh, what, do we think, what do we think he's doing, by the way? Like, real... Like, he, he's not guarding the stone anymore. He could just be anywhere. That's the like, thing. What, is, I leave. hope we follow that up at some point. Because he's just he's just bored out of his gourd right now. Like, the question is, he's got nothing to do. He would have been bored anyway. But he's got nothing to do now. Like, can, can he, does he have powers where he can teleport somewhere? Or would he have to, like, walk a million miles to get to any sort of civilization? Is well, there a civilization on that planet? We don't even know. Oh, that's true. He's oh, on a different planet. Yeah. He wouldn't walk a million so miles from civilization. He'd have to get in a spaceship. What am I talking about? Sorry, Dan. Go ahead. He'd have to, he'd have to make clones and then, like, spell out stuff on the moon with their, with <laughs> <Yes>! their bodies. <laughs> and then they, I want they that. Have to... No, wouldn't it be great if every after credit scene for five movies was building to that? Um, <laughs> that's so I... good. To your point earlier about the actor, I think he was so fine that I didn't realize it wasn't Hugo Weaving when I was watching the movie, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. but I think if he was, like, the big bad yeah, and had to deliver a bunch of over-the-top dialogue, you probably would finally notice it wasn't Hugo Weaving. Like, if he does the brain thing, I don't know if that guy can do it. But I don't know, because I don't know who that guy is. Me either. Um, <laughs> but was, I would was, like to see the rest Andy of Circus. the Circus. <laughs> Andy Circus. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's, direct, he's busy directing... The Marvel movie of uh, their most popular character ever, and it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> he, I, I think uh, bringing back the leader finally would also be a thing to do. Yes, the leader is my favorite Hulk villain. I would even, love to see and that. And I know isn't... you want him in a Hulk thing, but even if we can't do a, a Hulk standalone or the Hulk's not in that movie, I still think you could do the leader in an Avengers movie, and it could be pretty cool. I do not want bumbling Stoner Man Hulk anymore, so they can they can have the leader in something else. <laughs> You're now fine with it. Well, they, yeah, at this point they have to reinvent him. I mean, again, because yeah. well, now he's like selfie in the ice cream bar Hulk. He's completely different now. Uh, completely different type of horrible. <laughs> but you know to what? quote Mark Ruffalo from the first Avengers movie, well, this all seems horrible. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> can I? That's great. Can I suggest that DJ that the thing you just said sounds like it could be the title of a current Marvel comic book? <laughs> selfie the with the I- selfie with the ice cream Hulk number one. <laughs> sounds like it could be a current Marvel comic very easily. I'm surprised. Someone in the comments is saying Galactus Cap. I'm surprised that wasn't one of your answers. It's the obvious obligatory thing to say. And you you immediately <laughs> went to, like, Big Bad that's in a bunch of movies, so that's where my head went, and I couldn't think of a one-time standalone thing. Well, tell me that, like, the next big one, right? Like, I don't want to build the Galactus, because Galactus you don't build to. He shows up, and you're screwed. Like, you don't build the Galactus. <laughs> like, you don't see Galactus what if, like, coming. He what if, like, on the news it's just, like, it's, like, planet eaten. Or at least <laughs> no. by a giant cloud. That's every, every movie, there's another planet that's eaten. He's, he's a coming this way. I mean, I don't mean to say that he doesn't like have a path where if people like in space knew the trajectory he was on, that we would know. But like, how would we know? And then why wouldn't we be trying to stop that from happening? I just think it would be really difficult to build to and not feel really dumb that nobody attempted to stop it. Yeah. I'm going to be very interested to see what they do with the Fantastic Four right out of the gate. Like, what villain they use, what they're building to in the future. I mean, obviously, they're going to want to do Galactus and Doom eventually, but I have a feeling they'll start out with some sort of smaller villain. I also think you could 
I, I also think a cool way to open to, to introduce the Fantastic Four um, could be with a Galactus movie where you do like a big epic thing and that's their debut, and then you do somebody like uh, you know more intellectual the movie after that. I think it could <laughs> open with Galactus. I think that could they go be from okay. Galactus to Mole Man. Yeah, there, now I want I want I Molecule love, Man for the first movie. I still say Molecule Man all the way for that first movie, but I don't think anybody else cares about that. But Fantastic Four versus <clears throat> Rocket Racer and Big Wheel. Molecule Man has <laughs> been up. horrifying the last couple times he's shown up. You could do a really super scary Molecule Man because uh, because the implications of his powers, if you take them to the, fur- to, to the furthest degree, are really scary. And uh, he's in Secret Wars, and he's just freaking nuts and scary in Secret Wars. And ever since I, I read that, I was like, ah, I want him in a movie. <laughs> that was really weird, Dan, because me and Cap were shooting Morphin Mania earlier, and we brought up Rocket Racer and Big Wheel. We did. Have you seen... Because the Warrior uh... Wheel was in that episode, and so I had to bring up... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Rocket, not Rocket Racer, the other one, Big Wheel, Rocket Raccoon. Back, Wheel. <laughs> back in my YouTube days, I, Rocket, I made, Raccoon Racer. Racer, I Rocket made a Racer. big, I X. made a fake, I made a fake Big Wheel Origins trailer where Christopher Walken plays Big Wheel. It's one of my finest accomplishments. Yeah, it is, it is. <laughs> yeah. No, you deserved a, a, some sort of certificate for that, man. <laughs> um, certificate, <laughs> an achievement, Certific- award, certificate of greatness so we have made people laughness okay how many more super chats we have we are well over time uh five i think are you serious let's knock them out of rapid fire shall we all right uh he says um, thanks everybody oh, this is getting, this i'm is sorry very I, don't, technical. I don't mean to seem irritated that we have super chats uh, we are, no, you guys are great. a quarter after, 15 minutes after two, so now a two-hour show tonight is no longer accurate. It is now at least a two-hour and 15-minute show. Go ahead, sir. All right, Bag Studios. This is technical, so listen up. I don't want to repeat this one. <laughs> assuming Netflix continued improving, assuming Netflix continued improving, Dare, Daredevil 3 greater than 2, Jessica Jones 3 greater than 2, etc., in the better reality where it continued where does marvel netflix go how does mcu change yeah well um i mean immediately you're doing like a hypothetical desert island scenario with rules i don't understand so like the 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 initial easiest place for me to go with that is if everything is good and better than the last thing we make at least three defenders uh seasons probably like we like we probably keep bringing those guys back together and do some big thing with them you have a phase two of sorts where punisher would have been the beginning of four more shows including moon knight and ghost rider maybe and maybe blade or something or whatever you did you know you'd have another set of those and then you'd have another defender show that had either just those characters or like eight characters all together um it, like in my perfect world you don't keep doing new seasons of each of those you have them be miniseries and then make another one when you actually have a good idea instead of forcing that to happen but if they were all good and kept going um i mean that could have just been a domino effect of of of, of, of wonderful and constant money making um i can't answer the second part of your question because you've changed too much of how the rules of this work uh when you get to how would it change marvel on the whole um some or none at all like in that perfect world does the uh, mcu at large actually get to be affected by this uh do you have two different people running two different sides that don't like each other and don't want those things to ever talk to each other uh in your perfect world maybe not maybe maybe if you don't have that that's the thing that makes them better initially immediately so it's all too desert island for me i don't know about that second part but i think at the very least you would have ended up with several more shows greenlit and uh you would have ended up with more defenders and possibly some team up shows possibly finally that uh iron fist and um luke cage team up show which is what one of the seasons of that should have been because the only really good episode of the second season of uh iron fist is when luke cage shows up and they get and they get teamed up together or was that luke cage it was luke cage that did that but the only good thing the really good thing with danny was when those two characters were together um, that was actually really pretty cool, and they should have had a show together because their chemistry was awesome. Um, I think they would have made a whole lot of things I wouldn't have watched, because um, the only show of those that I liked was, uh, or watched anyway, was Daredevil, and I watched Defenders because Daredevil was in it, and I thought that show was awful. Um, because it was so, awful. 
Yeah. Um, I watched a little bit of The Punisher, and I wanted to watch more of that, and I just um, didn't uh, end up having the time to watch that that season when it came out. Um, I think John Bernthal is amazing. Um, but the other characters I just don't have any interest in. I tried to get into Jessica Jones, and uh, I couldn't, couldn't do it. Um, but if – I don't know. I think – Netflix, uh, the Netflix side of the Marvel universe, uh, if, if they got to talk to each other, it would have been interesting to see, like, I would have liked to have, it would have been interesting to see how Disney would have handled it. Like if they got to talk to each other and were, if they started crossing over, like, are you going to promote the TV? Sh- like, are you going to promote the, the Punisher television show in your family, um, uh, blockbuster movie that like, you know, kids go to see like that's, that just seems kind of weird to me. Cause you, know? you shouldn't. But, yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know. It's, I don't have a family, so my perspective, I guess, is a little different in that. Like, I would like to see the Marvel universe be the Marvel universe and have all these things ex- coexist and cross over and interact with each other. I think that would be cool, but, and like have different tones, things that are more violent, things that are not as much. I don't know, um, but I understand like people's trepidations with that, and I understand Disney's trepidations with it. So. I don't know. Um, well, and understand, of course, I, I would like that, too. And I'd like, the, like as you say, the Marvel Universe to be the Marvel Universe. It's just, it's it gets really sticky when it's like, let's have the Punisher show up in a Spider-Man movie. Like, that Punisher. And, because because my biggest worry would be it would it just by, it would just have to be watered down where he's not quite the same character. Like, putting, you know, again, Constantine in the CW shows. Like. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. It, it's weird that like that has to happen in movies in a, in a way that it doesn't have to happen in the comics, you know, because like the Punisher is a character that first appeared in Spider-Man and like was not the Garth Ennis version of the character, but he was like a violent, you know, killer and stuff, um, which is fine when you're a villain. Yeah. But anyway, we have more Super Chats to get through. Villains be killing. Yeah. Uh, so, um John Ty gives us another super chat. He says, why does it seem that people don't learn lessons from precautionary tales in fiction? We got Brandon. <laughs> from precautionary tales? That's what he wrote. It's a yeah. precautionary tale. No idea. I think it just means, I think it just like means a, cautionary tale. It's like a cautionary tale where people are just really careful <laughs> to not mess up the future. <laughs> um, okay, I'm sorry. Read that again. So, uh, why does it seem that people don't learn lessons from cautionary tales? Oh yeah, and fiction? that's a really good point. Uh, yeah, because I mean, like, it's just we're just seeing the Orwellian society happen. I think it's because really good cautionary tales have their finger on something that looks like if we continue to go the direction we're going, is going to end up happening. And good fiction, even if a lot of people consume it, is not necessarily going to be enough to turn us around. Um, like we need those things. I think it helps us on an individual level on a way it's difficult to help us on a mass society, societal level. And I think even something like, as crazy as this is to say, something like 1984, um, a person might read and sort of, even if they sort of get what it's about, it's still an entertainment before it's anything. Um, and like, you know, so that's a good thing and a bad, a bad thing, but anybody else have a response to that? I'm not sure that I know the answer to that question off the top of that. It's a very good question, but I I don't know that I know the answer. It's something I'd have to ponder, I suppose. What was the specific wording again on that question? <laughs> what? what specific... Why does it seem that people why does it seem that people don't learn lessons from precautionary tales in fiction? I don't know, that is a good question, but I don't have an answer for that either. <clears throat> You've, well, you've stumped us. <laughs> it's okay because we got another one from John Ty coming right in. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I like your answer. It's about as good as anything. <laughs> well, it's the Captain Logan show, so we'll go with that. What's the difference, John Ty asks, between what's the differences between compassion and love? <laughs> um, There's different kinds of love. I would say compassion is one of them. Like, like that's kind of in there. Well, the compassion doesn't necessarily mean you you, you, you like have have love for someone, but you just that you care that you have you feel like you have a stake in someone else's existence. You know, uh, you you care enough to uh, 
to do something about someone else's situation where uh, yeah yeah i think loving someone is is like more of a, a personal connection between uh you and whatever that person it'd be a person or object or type of thing like if you really love a certain type of product or you love a person uh you don't have compassion for that product but you know you could certainly love that thing right they seem a little bit different to me yeah yeah i don't know the reason i say that is like like when you when you look at it from like i don't know and i'm not a religious guy but when you look at it from like the from from like say a, the, the the biblical perspective jesus says like love your neighbor as yourself you're not gonna like have a personal connection with every single person so that sounds like he's saying compassion to me before he's saying the kind of love you were saying and so love there are different kinds of love you have yeah. like romantic love you have agape love which is also a biblical thing you have um you, you, you have you have platonic love uh I, I feel like compassion is in there so i, I think it's weird to compare them well, I looked up the dic dictionary definition of compassion. Oh, and the internet uh, strikes again. It says that compassion means sympathetic pity and concern for the sufferings and mis misfortunes of others. So I think, like, going off that definition, like, um, when I'm in love, like, when in love with another person, um, I think when you, when you have, like, a healthy, loving relationship with your significant other, like, you don't pity them. Like you love them in a way that they like inspire you to be better and you bring out the best in them. Um, like you don't, I don't know. Like I, I feel like taking the, the pity aspect of compassion is not there in love. And I'm not saying having pity on people is negative, is a negative thing. It can motivate people to do very positive things like, you know, um, feed the feed homeless people, you know, like people that run homeless shelters and stuff like they are probably motivated by pity. Um, and that's good. Um, but I think I, I agree that I think they're based on the definition here. Um, they seem like different things to me. Um, not that I didn't have that, you know, uh, offhand, but knowing what the definition is now. Yeah. Um, we got two super chats left. One is from one and only productions. And he says, have you guys seen 2001 a space odyssey recently? Just watched uh, your new year's stream where you talked a little about it. Did we talk about that in years? I guess we did, Kat. I mean, that was a three-hour stream. Heck of fun. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie since I was a kid, so I can't speak on it. I need to finally sit down and do that, and maybe, I don't know, maybe somebody will request it at some point. I don't know. Because people want me to talk about that all the time. Uh, I'd be down to watch I just, it. Like, I just yeah. haven't gotten to it. I've seen it a couple years, a few years ago, and I really, really liked it. Um, I would recommend reading the book with it because it kind of explains what in the world you're seeing. Um but I think it's great. Well, movie. I love Clark's prose. I just have never sat down and read that. Like, I'm a bad sci-fi fan. I watched it probably <laughs> 10 years ago. I watched 2001 A Space Odyssey, like DJ, I think a couple years ago. I like Kubrick's movies a lot. Um, so I really, really like that movie. It's not my favorite of his movies like it is for a lot of people. I tend to like um, The Shining, A Clockwork Orange, Full Metal Jacket a little bit more than that. But And I, and I also like... Um, uh, Doctor Strange love a lot too, yeah. um, so there are movies I like in Kubrick's like filmography that I like more than 2001, but it's still a really good movie. I still really like it. Crazy that that and Planet of the Apes came out the same year. Uh, um, no. John Ty, the last super chat of the evening, as of this moment, are YouTubers becoming the new cult leaders? <laughs> no, that's Jared Leto. <laughs> Interesting. Um, did you see his like maybe some of them came sometimes. out and said i can that. see why you'd say that what is it i was just talking about something that dan said he, he he came out dan and was saying that it was just like a music festival or something like they were just setting up for a music festival i don't know those those photos those are it was crazy yeah, there's like a bunch of like packages you could buy on his website, like the Stargazer package, package where you just buy like a plot on the desert where you're like outside. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then there was like one of them where you like go in a tent that's supposedly like all inclusive and it like includes food and shit. And like you just sit <laughs> in the desert with like Jared Leto and like for. He wears like, like white robes, like everybody wears white and everything. And he like says on his social media that it is a cult. He's like, yes, we are a cult. 
<laughs> okay. Huh. It's strange. But um back to back to the question. Um He's gonna be the new Shia LaBeouf, isn't he? That's Shia LaBeouf. That's that's where we're going with all that. Yeah, I I think it as far as the YouTuber thing, are there still YouTubers that have like like really dedicated like me i just i never watched pewdiepie so i don't know if his audience is still as dedicated to him as they once were i don't follow any of those people really so i were really the wrong person to ask about this i don't really know the thing to that, that's in yeah it's not like i keep up super well either um i don't hear dan as much about people that are super um like like obsessed in a positive way with YouTube channels as much as I hear people who spend all their time dedicated to ruining people. Yeah, that's a definitely thing. it seems like you have thing. cults built around that, where it's not even so much like a YouTuber is a cult leader as a YouTuber accidentally becomes a like negative cult leader in that they accidentally created a cult that hates them and wishes them ill or dead. And that's <laughs> really bad. I hear all the time about, especially in the video game community, um, the streamers, yeah, that's a huge thing. people that just spend all of their time uh, trying to make somebody's life hell for whatever reason it's just like you know i you know very often it's it's like a it's like a misery kind of situation where it's like i loved you you were the best thing ever and then you did that thing that pissed me off and now i want you like wiped off the face of the planet so there's people that will spend all of their time like catfishing people and stuff like that and i'm like first of all that's nuts and terrible and second of all you got nothing better to do apparently not like, yeah. you have all this free time on your hands I heard that that guy. I don't know. You, I don't know if you guys have heard, heard of him. Uh, that guy Boogie that does a lot of like video gaming stuff. I've heard like he has a huge like um, yeah. alliance of people that just hate him and like try to like destroy him. Like there's a whole industry d dedicated to hating him. Him like the same way that like people make four videos a day about Brie Larson and or Kathleen Kennedy <laughs> and hating them. Like it's a whole industry on YouTube. It's so strange. And you wonder if they even really hate them or if they just know it'll get clicks. That's a lot, yeah, I think, isn't it? Yeah, I think so too. But the people that aren't even making videos that are just like, we find out later behind the scenes, you know, swatting people and going after people, it's it's like they're not getting anything out of it. They just want to see somebody destroyed. It's really scary. They just want to watch the world burn. <laughs> Um, Gregory uh, Davison that, says, incredibly yeah, negative note. Gregory Davison says, uh, ever since Cat disliked train spotting, I've dedicated my life to destroying him. <laughs> That's really funny. Well, that, was that is I'm, all. I'm, I hope I didn't give anyone any ideas. Wish we hadn't talked about that. Yeah. So anyway, um, sorry. About <laughs> no, I was just saying yes. <laughs> Well, that was, so like, we glitched out for a second, that was the worst possible time for that kind of a laugh. <laughs> like, I was like, I'm not give anybody, guys. and then nobody said anything for like 10 seconds, and I was like, and we're lingering on this now. Wonderful. <laughs> this is the best. Okay, I'm ready to stop now. Uh, no, thanks everybody for being here. This was a lot of fun. Tons of super chats. You guys are awesome. Uh, a really giant widespread of different sorts of questions um, from the... Uh, from from the most mundane of uh, hey cap when are you doing this thing to uh the the, the most uh, poignant and profound we appreciate everything uh you guys are wonderful thanks a bunch for being here uh this is one of the longest captain logan shows we've done in a long time or maybe ever we are what five shows away from 100 i'm trying to do something cool for 100 i don't know what we'll do with that yet but one hundo dan brandon thank you guys for coming back again Absolutely. yeah your evening thanks for having us. us it's been fantastic <laughs> uh and, and and dj thanks for uh doing everything you do as always man of course uh, quick, quick plug for Morphin Mania for the 15 people who care. Dan, uh, DJ and I uh, have made a new channel for that. Uh, it's been up for uh, a while now. We are through what? The episode 76, 77 uploaded now? <laughs> Yeah, we are all the way up to, yeah, in the 70s, and then uh, the Alien Rangers will be coming out end of this week, beginning in the next week, and then the 2017 movie will be coming out. 
And then after already that, in the queue. Zio and DJ and I have already started shooting new episodes, which will come out uh, in the not too distant future after that. And we're really excited mm-hmm. to finally get back to that and see if we remember anything about that show a year after getting back to it. But uh, <laughs> DJ Moore is coming back to me that I thought would. So, Do you think JDF will ever see Morphin Media? No, I don't. I mean, there's plenty of Power Rangers no. shows. He's not going to care. <laughs> Hopefully not. That guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're gonna have to make that video at some point and put it on morphin mania too no we can't do that we'll lose all our subscribers <laughs> well i think we should <laughs> well, everybody thanks a lot for watching we should appreciate it and we will see you again next week uh same cap times at the same cap channel thursday night at seven central uh let me announce this real quick too i have decided to try to add for the next couple weeks at least, an extra Captain Logan show to the weekly roster uh, because I know folks are at home and have uh, more time to watch and folks uh, have have, uh, have suggested that and asked me to do that. And I've been uh, floating it in a couple places. People seem to like that idea a lot. I don't know when yet exactly that's going to happen. Uh, I don't know if it'll be a time that DJ can make it. So if he can mod, he will. He and I've talked about it. He's not opposed to that idea. Um, it may just be me by myself. I may try to get uh, even another moderator if it's time DJ can't make it. And I'm not going to promise that after that we continue with two shows a week necessarily. I want to see how that goes. But I've been kicking around adding an extra uh, live show for a long time, so I want to try it. I think now is exactly the right time to do it. In two weeks, I'm getting my surgery, and so uh, I'm not going to be able to shoot anything for at least the next couple of weeks after that. I'm saying it might be as much as a month. I just don't know how I'm going to be feeling. I don't know what that's going to be like. I've never had kidney surgery before, so I don't know what that's going to be like. Uh, for anybody that hasn't heard, heard about this, I have a tumor on my kidney. It is likely cancerous, so I have to get uh, surgery to get that out. And uh, nobody panic, nobody worry. It's going to be fine, uh, but I'm going to be out for a little while after that, not posting anything. And then uh, I'll let you guys know when I'm up for coming back. And uh, I may come back kind of slowly. I may come back just with some Captain Logan shows or just with something else. I don't know yet. So uh, folks that have requests on the books, uh, there will be at least a couple of weeks where I'm not posting any requests at all because of that. Uh, so everybody just know that's why there's going to be a hiatus. And then I'll come back and uh, we will do more of these and more of um, all the other <laughs> cool stuff that we do on Geek Evolution. And uh, once again, DJ is laughing at things that I'm not privy to because I'm trying to talk. What? People are saying that that you should live stream your surgery and I should moderate it. Great. Yeah, I I'm would sure be so let, down. I'm sure they'll let us do I that. Would... Yeah. So hey, you... I watched a YouTube channel where two friends got a brosectomy and they and they made a video, a YouTube I video, for the means. whole thing. I don't know if it's what's weirder, the fact that that's a thing or that you watched it. <laughs> is a, a brosectomy what I think a brosectomy is? I think it. No, it's just they it's just they best friends and they got a vasectomy together. It's not like. I don't know what you're thinking, but it's not anything Yeah, that's weird. what I thought yeah, it was. That's, that's I was thinking. Like, weird. I didn't know that was a thing. I'm not close enough with any man to do such a thing. Um, and why would you do that? Like, I don't even... Yeah, I don't understand that. Um, <laughs> this, this turned into after dark. It really did. Do you think that there will be people that will be upset you're taking a hiatus despite knowing why you're taking a hiatus? No, I mean, I take hiatuses every now and again. Everybody's always really cool with it. The Legion of Hate will come out. Everybody's always cool. Yeah, what <laughs> Cap doesn't know is is the the other three horsemen are going to get together and do Captain Logan shows while he's passed out. I don't, he's... Know, I don't know how I feel about that. As, you know what? As long as I get a cut of the super chat money, I'm good. There, there's a there's a moment in um, Spawn yeah. Year where your show's taken over by uh, by Doom's Vince. Yeah. So that kind of was meta meta happened already. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't actually true. No, true. True that it was not true. Yeah. What is that noise? Cap, I don't know. Cap's about to get flipped. Uh, yeah, so the pipes, the, 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 oh, pipes that's the plumbing are right about, we're in a basement. I mean, uh, that's, you know, and we're, 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 not, we're in an unfinished basement, and we don't have this part soundproof, so whenever that happens, you can hear it. Anyway. The pipes, the pipes are calling. Yeah. So, um. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> okay, well, thanks a lot for being here. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is um, the, the, the I'm not too concerned about the surgery, but you know what sucks about it? Um, because of the way hospitals are having to be run right now, uh, I'm not going to be able to have any visitors at all, so I have to walk in the building by myself. Like, my wife can't even be there. That's and crazy. originally, because they, they said I could have somebody with me overnight, so originally I was going to have Jason come hang out with me after the surgery and spend the night with me in the, in the, in the room, and I can't even do that now. So I'm going to be all by my lonesome. 
So, um, I don't know. If I'm up to it, I'll chat on the Discord a little bit and stuff. and Because I'll have nothing better to do. So, I might... I, you, you, some of you guys might talk to me while I'm in the hospital room. Oh, yeah. See, Discord, bring people together in these difficult times. No, it's... Dan, yeah. it's the... I mean, it's, it's the coolest thing you've ever done. Like, it's, it's been just absolutely wonderful. Um, and I, I think it's... Oh, thanks, man. I think it's been a really... Um, great thing for for everybody there. Just kind of uh, let letting loose, and it's made it easier for folks to get through this. So, yeah, I think so too. Um, I think it has brought us closer together as a community. Like, I know a lot of the people that were posting on the Facebook group like way more personally than I did before. It's it's really cool. Yeah, you have you have a sense of personalities when you see some names now. Exactly, exactly. Didn't have before. Uh, Carl Maxey says that I think it's a regular surgery, but it's actually the Weapon X program. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Logan. Cap- Mutale, Captain Logan with Adamantium. I'm going to come out. And it- well, you know what? That's that's actually really scary that you would say that because my name is almost Wolverine's <laughs> name, right? Like, my name is James Logan Williamson. I'm nearly Wolverine already. So, like, I'm going to come out of that. And- oh, man. I got to the, the- cause. The first thing that the doctor's going to say when you wake up is just like, we made you indestructible. <laughs> I wake up and they're like, so um, I got some good news and bad news. The good news, the, the, the good news is we didn't actually turn you into a super soldier. The bad news is uh, we thought you had bone claws and you don't have any claws for us to put anything on. So why didn't you come with the bone claws? Yeah. And then you'll have that weird helmet thing going on and you'll run around. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna find out uh that you're gonna see the animal in captain logan I mean, old man captain logan anyway well everybody thanks for watching i uh, hope you had a good time we will see you again <laughs> next week i know i had a good um, time did you have a good time yes, I did. i'm sorry i know we talked about a ton of stuff you don't know anything about yeah, that's fine try to give you a little bit of an education <laughs> about comics yeah uh, we're gonna go three, pull yeah, especially so... the, the right third after this most, the third most popular graphic novel of all time as soon as you <laughs> said that i was like there is no sorry, way Brandon. to not look like messing. I'm making fun of Brandon, so I'm just going to steer right into that. So oh, I'm like, I'm sorry about that, but I didn't know how else to do it. Head, head on. Couldn't I'm figure it out. Forehead. I just, I was anticipating the comments too much. I was like, these guys are going to mutilate Brandon out of it. Is there any, is there any comic where uh, Bruce Wayne retires? Oh, no. He said that. Everybody's well, going to. okay. So I'd, I'd like to make the distinction, though, that it, it, I was referring, that, it, and I don't know how this fits into exactly what you said, but that it's. Where he does retire, not necessarily that he's just back from retirement now. So I don't know if those things are mutually exclusive or not in that context. Well, it's hard to it's hard to sell a story called Batman without <laughs> Batman in it. Well, sure. Well, no, Batman retires. Would be a great Batman story. retires at the end of the run, whereas instead of like it starts with him coming back from retirement. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's you know various things where like batman dies and stuff but i mean usually that's set up for things before it's like the you know the actual end of a story sure. you know? i want to see a batman story where it's just the last act of the irishman where it's just a guy in a, in a retirement home reflecting on his life tyler overall says uh, batman no more i mean there are runs because what you're talking about if you're not like definitively retiring like right right away we're stuck with uh, a limited number of books because most batman stories are in continuity you know what i mean so like at that point you're talking about elseworld stuff but like we've got various points where batman stops being batman and somebody else takes over like that happens okay. of course but you know that's nightfall um that's because he gets his back broken so he can't be batman but anyway, we ended the show already, so we're going to end it for, for real now. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching. Once again, I was Captain Logan. This was Brandon Grimm. See you guys next week. There's DJ Martinez. Who is That's not, me. Who is not uh, Latino, was it? He's not. Neither of them. Are, nobody here is Latino. People thought we had Latino folks here. We're yeah, not. we really need to branch out uh, the devolution community. We have no Latinos. We're very offensive. We have a differ- We have a diverse. We're very <laughs> offensive. <laughs> we really do. <laughs> Uh, and 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 Dan Torre. Stay safe, you degenerates. Who we're, who we're gonna say is one quarter Romulan. Uh, <laughs> Degenerate evolution. Oh. Thanks a lot for He's watching, a, everybody. Simon Tarsis. Simon Tarsis. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> bye. bye, everybody. Bye. Simon.